All right. So, uh, hello everyone. Um, welcome to uh, our uh, webinar today. Let me just give you a short introduction on what will be our webinar. The youth is the hope of the nation, and nurturing them now would define our future. Providing them with education is a foundation of nurturing and building back better towards the new normal. Hence, it must continue. Issues and challenges delaying this must be addressed. Reclaiming the power and continuous mobilization from the youth sector can lead to the change in the community and nation. Welcome to our webinar today entitled Making Tertiary Education a Foundation in Building a Better Normal. So we are live here at uh, Facebook. So we are being viewed by uh, our netizens and hopefully uh, we get to reach uh, various students no, here in social media. And uh, this uh, webinar is uh, organized by ENET or Education Network Philippines, the PUP Central na Consejo na Mag-aaral, the PUP Office of the Student Regent, and the Students' Party for Equality and Advancement of Knowledge. So to give us an introduction to our webinar, may I now call on uh, Mr. Junero Dacula, the President of the Central na Consejo na Mag-aaral. Thank you very much, Ob. And uh, first of all, um, um, the student sector wants to share then na uh, um, nagpapasalamat tayo that dahil may gantong opportunity. And right now, we are uh, a vast, talaga majority of the students are right here in our webinar. And yung composition natin ngayon is well diverse. So we have representatives from the education sector, from uh, education advocates, private universities, our fellow scholars from Visayas, and here in Manila na rin. And most especially sa mga kapwa nating scholar ng bayan mula sa PUP. Yan, pagpapugay po sa ating lahat. Let me start to you by giving the um, the very niche of what we are trying to um, to advocate for our education sector. The right to education is a basic fundamental human right. Everyone should have an inclusive access to it and everyone should be given to. And this has been assured to international calls, lalong lalo na sa goal number four ng Sustainable Development Goals ng United Nations, and also under the UNESCO Delors Benchmark. Now, with the current situation that we have, the drastic effects of the ongoing worldwide crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, it had already taken a toiling effect, primarily in the education sector. Now, the vulnerable sectors at most faces the challenges and the compressed situation wherein they have no other choice but to adapt and set forth the requirements needed for the new normal condition under the education paradigm. Most Filipino students have no other choice but to choose between continuing education or not in view of this abnormal condition. This is very alarming because the choice should never be made into if we have stronger, better mechanisms to support our students, which is primarily the ex, um, those that are experiencing the aftermaths of this pandemic. Let's admit it. We did not expect that the aftermaths of the pandemic will cause millions of lives to be paralyzed and that it aimingly fired the marginalized, the students in specific. Now, the Philippine educational landscape is not ready with the online system of learning. But as the saying goes by, we are striving. We are trying to prepare ourselves because we believe in the resiliency of the Filipino students. It is very evident as we see students juggle jobs to save money in order to cope up and produce the necessity for an online mode. Others, as seen through social media platforms, seek help by knocking our hearts to their personal donation drives. And this is very alarming. See, our students are very maabilidad. And when we say the saying na hahamakin ng lahat, makuha ka lang, it does not really um, apply to relationship per se, but it reflects to the current situation of the Filipino students. However, we must put into context that that resilience should not be a factor for us to be exploited and be disregarded. Our demands should be at the paramount concern of our national government 
and the educational governing bodies. Take note, we are striving. The necessities needed for online classes and online modes are very challenging. But in the hopes to continue in our education, we need to orderly survive in this jungle ride. As student, as, as fellow as scholar ng bayan, we deemed ourselves as tool for our nation's progression. However, let's not capitalize on the mere and just and equal access to basic tertiary education, catapulted by its systematic failure. Rather, we make a paradigm shift by first admitting that there is an educational crisis ongoing. We make both ends meet. We address all ongoing concerns. We prioritize what's really needed. And we must continue our unparalleled service to the marginalized students whom are very much affected of this crisis. While we try to exercise our freedom using the internet, we should also assess in our ends to magnify the voice of those who are crying for help. To really reimagine a society that cares for its people, hears the cries and vows to commit into putting forward the interests of the mass which the student sector is belonging. We devise this webinar in such a way we deliver the current situation of our Filipino youth, our hope, in a way we can engage to policy crafting and recommendations which are earnestly needed in this point in time. Now we invited resource speakers coming from our governing bodies in order for them, for them to hear our demands, to hear our voices, our cries. And lastly, we should all reflect on the current situation assess the material conditions on the grounds, and open our eyes to the existence of our reality because it's already here. Uh, that's all. Thank you, Aubrey. <laughs> Hello. All, all right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kola, for your uh, uh, intro. Very well said, no? Yung binanggit ni Sir Junero about the situation of the students. So moving on with uh, our program, I will now have the opening remarks from the president of uh, INET Philippines. But before that, uh, let me just tell you uh, a bit of something you know, about our uh, uh, this network. Uh, okay, so as a teacher leader, Professor Aureliano is very much involved in the advocacy for the upliftment of the status of teachers and non-teaching personnel. Through the implementation of the Republic Act 4670, the Magna Carta of Teachers, which he passionately fought for in reclaiming the noble status of the teaching profession, empowering the teachers and non teaching personnel through education and increased understanding of human rights principles and application in the school setting and in their respective families and communities is a continuing journey that Professor Aureliano shares to everyone. As the newly elected national president of the Civil Society Networks for Education Reforms, or ENET Philippines, she is consistently defending the right to education of the marginalized, excluded, and vulnerable sectors of our children, youth, and adult learners. As an advocate of child's rights and positive discipline in everyday teaching, she has contributed in this awareness advocacy towards the elimination of corporal punishments and bullying of learners and in the creation of child protection committees in schools and coming up with child's rights protection policies in pursuit of positive discipline model schools and child rights school environments. This project is with full support of Save the Children and the Department of Education. Professor Aureliano is currently a council member of the Literacy Coordinating Council of the Department of Education and member of the Philippine Forum for Basic Quality Education, member of the Global Partnership for Education. She also represents as lead person of the Civil Society Organization Education Cluster in the Philippine Open Government Partnership, Department of Education and CSOs under the Department of Budget and Management. From Education for All and Beyond to Sustainable Development Goals Number 4, Professor Aureliano has high hopes of bringing education reforms in the forefront of ENET's advocacy through building partnerships with the Department of Education, Commission on Higher Education, and other education departments, international NGOs like Save the Children, ASP Bay, 
U UNICEF, UNESCO, friendly and champions in the legislative or executive arena, and the broad civil society organizations working on education reform. Engaging the government to prioritize investment for an inclusive, equitable, lifelong learning for all and quality education is an important task to carry out in meeting the SDGs number four. Responsive governance and investments on education are crucial in resolving the deficits in education and achieving the targets of SDG number four. All her endeavors validate the catalyst role of teachers in building the future of our children, youth, and adults in an educated Philippine society. So without further ado, I will now call on Professor Flora C. Arellano, President of INET Philippines for our... Hello, Ms. Flora. Okay. Can you hear me now? Is it okay? Yes, the sound? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for the um, kind introduction. In the Philippines, in cooperation with PU Speak, PUP Speak, and other student organizations sponsoring this uh, webinar, welcomes everyone to our webinar in making tertiary education a foundation in building a better normal. We are grateful to have with us distinguished public servants and officials of our government, Honorable Mark Go, Honorable, Honorable Joel Villanueva, Honorable Ryan L. Esteves, Honorable Eleanor Joyce Bartolome, and Mr. John Joseph Heron. You have already started, or uh, our first speaker have already, has already started, uh, the situation we are in right now. The COVID-19 pandemic has really changed the course of our lives. It has profound effects no, on the health, safety, education, and well-being of students and teachers, bringing about economic dislocation of breadwinners, of the family and reduced source of income, as well as uncertainties, what will happen to our future life. And education is the hardly hit sector by this COVID-19 pandemic, where prolonged school closures had brought the students and learners psychosocial issues like stress, anxiety, and depression, exacerbated by the home quarantine thus limiting their daily mobility within the home setting with no defined activity to work on. The, this pandemic has resulted also in the paradigm shift of the teaching and learning process in the country. Since the implementation of the community quarantine, face-to-face -face classes are suspended and it comes with a challenge of continuing education through other modes of learning modalities. For higher education, the Commission on Higher Education, the CHED, together with higher education institutions, will be using flexible learning options and fill Philippine CHED Connect, an online portal. Again, the problem is access to internet and having the necessary equipment to, able, to be able to cope up with digital learning and to have also the financial capacity to avail it. But with economic condition of the families of our scholars right now, this will be a problem, a very great problem. In the tertiary education, another problem that we will be confronting is that provision of scholarship that covers free tuition and other fees in state and local universities and colleges and state-run technical vocational institutions through UNIFAS was suspended. That affected the learning continuity of students, especially those from the impoverished families. The youth is the hope of the nation and nurturing them now would define our future. 
providing them education is a fundamental fundamental foundation of nurturing our students you know, to really build up this what we call building back better towards the new normal hence it must continue and the issues and challenges delaying this must be addressed by all Reclaiming the power and continuous mobilization from the youth sector can lead to the change in the community and nation. Working with young people to build resilience and support the recovery of the nation is a crucial part, especially now when classes will be opening soon. This webinar aims to gather the youth and students into creating a healthy platform of discourse, sharing of ideas and opportunities for collaboration with the goal of ensuring that no learners or students are left behind, especially in times of the pandemic. Now, I would like to share with you the objectives of the webinar. First, to highlight the voice of the youth and students during the, this pandemic and discuss the situation and challenges when it comes to learning. To determine what is the legislative support of the Congress in terms of accessible, equitable, and inclusive implementation of the learning continuity plan in the higher education, especially among marginalized, excluded, and vulnerable sectors. Third, we would like also to discuss the CHED regarding the implementation aspect of the government subsidy program in the context of learning continuity plan for SU SUCs, LUCs, students, and state-run vocational technical institutions in ensuring the access to learning resources, the delivery of flexible learning modalities, and ensuring quality learning of our students. And lastly, to come up with recommendations to the government, the civil society tertiary education agenda during this pandemic and beyond, and explore areas of engagement between the government, the youth organizations, and other education stakeholders. We are hopeful that in this webinar, access and participation in higher education and vocational technical education will not be limited by the financial means or social origins of our students, meaning they should be free of charge and that the government should ensure adequately funded student schemes that will be available for them. Let us defend higher education budgets to ensure the central role of higher education institutions in educational, economic, employment role in society, as well as in scientific, technological, and applied research and production of skilled graduates. As education stakeholder, in the Philippines reiterates our willingness to collaborate with the government, especially the Commission on Higher Education, the TESDA, the Department of Education, as well as our legislative bodies, our legislature, the Senate and the House, in working with you in enriching our policy development in higher and technical vocational education and in achieving the sustainable development goals, especially the the SDG4, and in promoting inclusive and equitable quality education and lifelong learning opportunities for all, even beyond this pandemic. So, mabuhay tayong lahat, lahat ng mga naririto ngayon para makipagbahagi sa ating diskurso, inaanyayahan natin ng lahat na maging proactive sa ating talakayan. Maraming salamat po. All right. Thank you so much, po, uh, Professor Erlian, for your uh, very rich remarks. No, 
uh, balikan ko lang yung objective na binanggit ni uh, Professor Aureliano na napakahalaga para po sa webinar na ano yung to come up with recommendations on government tertiary education agenda during this pandemic and beyond and explore areas of engagement between government, youth orgs and other education stakeholders. So yung ganong objective po no um naka doon din po tayo naka gear no, with this webinar. We want to be able to engage different stakeholders lalo na po yung ating mga policy makers no to help us in uh crafting policies towards that better normal sa education sector. And to show to you no to show sa ating mga viewers ngayon yung suporta no na binibigay ng ating mga policy makers we will be presenting to you a video message no from a very good senator who has been with Enet no and us here in uh, pushing for a better normal here in the education sector so uh, at this point uh, we will be presenting to you a video message from the uh, honorable senator Joel Villanueva chairperson of the Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education so ayan po Pagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat. First of all, allow me to commend the Network for Education Reforms and all its 130 member civil society organizations and partners. Your unshakable commitment to progressively reform the Philippine educational system is indeed laudable. Kinatawan pa lamang po tayo ng SIBAC party list doon po sa mababang kapulungan ng Kongreso ay katuwang na po natin ang INET Philippines sa pagsusulong ng Alternative Learning System, EFA, at uh, ngayon naman po ay ang uh, SDG4. Thank you again for your uh, two decades of resolute uh, effort to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and to promote lifelong uh, learning opportunities to everyone. Today, allow me to share with you some of our legislative accomplishments and uh, proposals to help our education system transition to the new normal. Even before COVID-19, our Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education has been working tirelessly to provide more and better educational and employment opportunities for our Filipino youth. Malinaw po sa atin na dapat ay maging daan ang edukasyon at training para makahanap po ng oportunidad at magandang trabaho ang ating mga kabataan. We supported the free tuition law and uh, played also a significant role to increase participation rate in tertiary education from all socio-economic classes. To help our fresh graduates jumpstart navigate their career path after leaving school, we pushed for the passage of the First Time Job Seekers Assistance Act. We were the principal author and sponsor of this measure, which uh, waives the fees for government-issued documents and clearances for around 1.3 million graduates annually who are seeking employment for the very first time. We also championed the passage of PQF, or the Philippine Qualifications Framework Act, to encourage lifelong learning among Filipinos and also push to become a law this Tulong Trabaho Act to prepare our young people to succeed in jobs that are increasingly shaped by the technology. Like you, we believe that COVID-19 cannot impede or interrupt our efforts and initiatives. We can surely turn this pandemic into an opportunity if we are ready to take up the challenge. We have to act with definitive urgency to hasten our progress because the issues that we seek to resolve pre-COVID-19 have now become life and death concerns for most of our kababayans. Education is an important aspect corollary to the health crisis that besieged our nation. The new normal, no doubt, has aggravated and lent greater urgency to the already grave and overdue struggle of our higher education sector. A case in point is the uh, use of internet technology to support flexible learning. Sa survey po na ginawa ng Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges or PASO, 
lumabas po doon na 34% na o 34% lamang ng ating mga estudyante sa mga SUCs ang may access sa internet sa kanilang mga tahanan. Hindi pa rin po nakakapaglaan ng internet connection ang DICT sa halos apat na raang SUC campuses sa apat na sulok ng ating bansa. But the shift to flexible learning may be especially difficult for the more than a thousand uh, small private HEIs in the country which have very limited resources and infrastructure. Subscription to private ICT service providers alone may require spending around 1 to 1.5 million pesos a year. And that's why it is important to note that the Coordinating Council of uh, Private Educational Associations or COCOPEA estimates that the revenue loss of the sector will range from 55.2 billion pesos to 142.1 billion pesos. This is consistent with the results of the MSME survey conducted by the Department of Finance ranking the education sector fourth in terms of revenue loss and second in terms of job loss. Fortunately, we were able to lay some fundamentals before the pandemic such as the Telecommuting Act or the uh, Work From Home Act and the Free Internet in Public Spaces Act. We already have reached out to the DICT to enhance free um, Wi-Fi hotspots in public areas to ensure that the connection may also be accessible to students in nearby private higher educational institutions. Kaugnay din po nito, isinulong natin ang uh, tatlong bilyong pondo sa ilalim ng Bayanihan 2 para po sa pagpapaunlad ng mga smart campuses sa ating mga SUCs at isang bilyong pondo naman para sa Training for Work Scholarship Program at Special Training for Emergency uh, Employment Program ng TESDA. We are also able to fast track several legislative proposals during the height of the community quarantine such as the proposed medical scholarship and return service program for deserving Filipino students in regions where there are no schools of medicine. Kailangan po natin ito lalo na ngayong may pandemya kung saan mayroon lamang po tayong tatlong doktor sa kada sampung libong populasyon sa ating bansa. Some people would describe the current COVID crisis as a black swan event. It is an unpredictable event beyond what is normally expected of a situation and it has potentially severe consequences. Bagamat sadyang hindi po mapaghahandaan ang uh, ganitong krisis, natutunan na po natin at at this point, ang mas maging resilient at magkaroon ng foresight sa iba't ibang larangan ng buhay kabilang na ang uh, para sa ating education sector. Ito po ay napakahalaga. Amid the pandemic, the uncoordinated approaches uh, undertaken by DepEd, TESDA, and CHED created an arena for confusion and anxiety over the proposed adaptation in a new normal education. It is in this context that we filed uh, Senate Resolution Number 492 to conduct an inquiry on how our education sector can promulgate coordinated policies that will demonstrate a synchronized approach to education responses to the new normal. Sa kasalukuyan po, nakasalig ang edukasyon ng ating mga kabataan sa mga pulisiya at mga desisyon ng Department of Education, TESDA at CHED. Higit kailanman, ngayon po natin kailangan ng iisang galaw at mas nagkakaisang pagtugon sa new normal education. Maraming maraming salamat po sa INET Philippines, sa pangungunan ni Professor Flora Arellano, sa inyo pong mga advokasiya para makamit po natin ang SDG4, mabigyan ng pagkakataon ang lahat ng kabataang Pilipino sa pantay at mataas na kalidad ng edukasyon at matulungan din po silang makaranas ng tunay at masayang pagbabago. May God bless us all! Ayan. So, thank you po sa office.
ni uh, uh, Senator Villanueva for that message no um, we, we really appreciate it no na kahit uh, hindi po natin siya makakasama ngayon sa ating uh, program ay uh, they still made the effort no to uh, send a message of solidarity for us in this activity okay so uh, proceed na po tayo sa uh, ating program no uh, the first uh, our first set of speakers now will be coming from the youth and the student sector. Uh, the title of our the title of their uh, topic no or yung portion nila ay the tertiary education situation of youth and students amid COVID-19. So ngayon uh, sisimula natin no yung ating speakers sa pagtingin ano nga ba yung sitwasyon o kalagayan no ng mga estudyante at ng ating uh, ng ating education education sa sa tertiary level no ngayong merong uh, covid-19 pandemic so we have uh, representatives here no from SUCs and the uh, private uh, higher education institutions or HEIs as well so for our first uh, speaker from the uh, student sector or youth sector uh, may I now call on the honorable Shari Ann Balikud the student regent of the University of Eastern Philippines. So, Ms. Shari. Hi, good afternoon. Hello. Okay, so, I'll be talking about the tertiary education situation of the SUCs, the provincial SUCs amid the COVID-19. Um, I have entitled the sub- of this as an uncharted territory for provincial SUCs, mainly, mainly because um, uh, not all of the provincial SUCs have been prepared to cover the cover all the problems that the COVID-19 brought up today. Um, next, please. Okay, so I'll, uh, the common concerns of the students in provincial SUCs when it comes to learning is first and foremost the weak or no internet connection of the IT infrastructure. Um, it's, no, it's no excuse or hindi naman natin mapagkakaila ngayon na ang hirap-hirap ng internet connection natin all over the Philippines and more so in the provinces where... Uh, Mahirap talaga, hindi masyadong established yung uh, uh, networks dun sa, dun sa mga uh, provinces natin. Let, uh, take for example, dito sa amin sa Northern Samar, here in UAP, we have, we have places where the, own, the strongest uh, network connecti connectivity that you can avail is only for calls or for text messages and connecting to the internet even facebook is really really hard so i think that's one of the bigger challenges that the S potential sucs have to face another is electricity can also be a problem in there are also a lot of island towns in the provinces especially in the visayas and mindanao area where uh, they are only powered by generators, so rotational yung electricity nila. So they can only uh, they can only have power within, like say, twelve hours uh, from twelve min twelve noon to twelve midnight or something like that. So means even if if young student you really really want you really really want to be able to cater or to really join yung discussions online. Because sabihin nat meron talaga meron schedule you you can't participate because maghihintay ka na okay 12 noon pa yung ilaw sa amin so yung kuryente sa amin so hindi ka makasali parang ganoon also access to modules and submission of documents because yung provincial SUCs natin um they are more catered towards yung municipalities
Hello. Hello. Um, okay. So, um, Shari, maybe you can ano, uh, fix your connection. Ayan. Hello. So, ayan, medyo nawala ng uh, audio si uh, Miss Shari. Okay. So, um, so while fixing her audio, um, siguro pa pwedeng tulungan siya ng ating uh, organizers. No? So, medyo nawala yung audio mo, uh, Miss Shari. Nakano siya? Ayan. Baka may problem sa connection. So, ayan. So, right now, this can be situation, no? From, from the University of Eastern Philippines. Ayan. Okay na ba? Okay. Medyo challenging yung connection natin ngayon. Hello, can you hear me po? Ayan, yan. Okay na, Shari. Okay na. Ayan. Was not aware. Ayan. Hello. Sige. Thank you. Yes, proceed ka na. Hello. Ayan, wala po, wala pong ayan, nawala ulit. <laughs> ayan. Kanin okay yung audio ata niya kanin. Hello. Hello, Miss Shari. Wala wala pa rin siyang audio. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, hello. Can you hear me na po? Ayan, ayan. Okay. So, Sige. basically, I was... Sorry. No, wala ka ulit. Sorry. May medyo pawala-wala yung audio. Okay. Hello, can you hear me po? Oh, sorry. Yeah, na. Hello. Hello, can you hear me na po? Meron na. Meron na. Pakain sa ipot mo yata. Hello, can you hear me na po? Yes, meron na. Meron na. Okay. So, um, so basically, yung students natin uh, in the official FUCs, they have Hello. Ayan. Hello. Uh, Shari, nawala ka ulit. Sorry. Ayan. Nawala ulit yung audio mo. Hello. Shari. Ayan, um, so, so unfortunately, may mga technical difficulties tayo kay Miss Sharin, no? Um, yan po talaga, uh, ang situation natin, no, this lockdown, challenge talaga, no, yung, academic, yung material conditions natin ngayon. Kaya, ito, um, actually, hindi lang man ngayon, ano, um, medyo, uh, actually, most of the students today, no most of the students are right now are experiencing the ano uh, the uh, this uh, connectivity issues no kaya siguro uh, at this point uh, baka pwedeng um proceed muna tayo sa next na speaker natin and then balikan natin si Miss Shari Mamaya from UEP okay so siguro baka pwedeng or ikotin mga na ma-inform si Miss Shari regarding this okay so moving forward po tayo no um pasensya na po sa ating mga manonood medyo uh, uh marami medyo may technical difficulties lang. We'll now move on to our uh next speaker uh Mr. Christian Onera the current vice chairperson and uh currently running for the position of chairperson ng sa Philippine Normal University University Student Council. 
So, uh, hello, Christian. Anera. Hello, Christian. Hello. Hello, Christian Anera. Hello. Hello po. Sorry. Yes, yes. Yes, ayan. Sige. So, medyo nagka-technical issues lang tayo. So, baka pwede mag-proceed ka muna sa iyong presentation, Christian. Flash naman po nung presentation po. Ayan. Uh, Michelle, maybe we can ayan, screen share. Ayan. Okay ayan. po. Thank you. Um, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. So, um, today, um, I will be discussing about PNU at SUC sa Bagong Kadawian. So, Bagong Kadawian is a Filipino term for new normal. Mga hamon at pagtutulungan. So, next slide po. So, pakilala ko po muna yung sarili ko. I am Christian Onera, former vice chairperson of the PNU-USC, currently running chairperson of the PNU-USC, a third-year education student from the Faculty of Behavioral and Social Sciences. Next po. So, yun. So, my presentation outline, what I'll be talking about is number one, I'll be highlighting the stand and voices of the PNU ones to the opening of classes in this time of pandemic. Um, dito ay aalamin din po natin kung ano yung mga um, nagbunsod kung bakit ganito ang, ang, sa, ang boses ng PNU ones sa panahon ng pandemic. Ikalawa ay SUCs in the opening of classes, the prevalent issues and existing problems. So I'll be showing some of the um, issues that the SUC are facing right now. Um, and third is the effort of PNU and its students in response to the challenges brought by COVID-19 to the institution. Um, dito ay papakita namin yung resiliency as of PNU as an institution na we can do better Diba? Na, as I, uh, despite of the pandemic that we are facing right now, um, I'll be sharing this. First is um, for others, baka maaaring mapagkunan din ng inspirasyon sa ginagawa currently ng PNU and, and mas magkaroon pa po ng um, tulong mula sa iba po pong institusyon na um, kinakailangan ng PNU. So next po. So yun. So ngayon, akin pong i-discuss yung survey na naganap um, sa PNU students' willingness and preparedness on the supposed opening of classes this August. So kahapon po dapat yung um, supposed na opening ng klase ng PNU. But on the, on the survey na sinagawa po ng PNU USC, so dito po pinakita yung boses ng estudyante. On the students' willingness, there are only 147 students that are willing to join or participate to the online or modular class this August, while 962 students are not willing to join online or modular class this August. Next po. So yan. So pinakita po namin yung sa willingness. While on the preparedness, bumaba po. So 87 students ang prepared lang or ready to join online or modular class this August. And 1,022 students are not ready to join online or modular class this August. Meaning, next slide. Meaning, most of the students are not willing and ready to attend online or modular classes this August. Nakakalungkot po itong balita sapagkat um, dahil nga po sa ang mga um, desisyon na sinasagawa po na sabi ay August, um, by August daw po isisimula na yung klase, eh, um, kita kita po sa resulta na hindi pa po ready at hindi pa po willing yung mga estudyante na mag-participate or join modular or online classes. Bakit? So next slide po. Bakit po? Um, what is the problem? One is the digital divide. Students of PNU came from different economic status. Some couldn't afford to have devices from the, for the modular or online classes. Second, location of the students. 
as you notice, not all students respond to the said survey. Um, kita po natin dito na nasa 1,500 lang halos yung nag-participate sa survey. Out of the 3,000 students or more na enrollees namin, this is for the reason that some can really, really connect to the internet due to the lack of internet connection to their specific places. Um, to give you insights, PNU Manila students came from different provinces across the provinces of Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Next po. Okay, third is loss of job. Due to the pandemic, many jobs have been affected and we couldn't deny the fact that even the families of PNU ones were affected by this. Um, Pang-apat po is limited to no connection to the internet. Most of the PNU ones are mobile data users. The result of the survey may show that many couldn't afford to load their numbers with a specific promo for the internet use. Um, nakaka, um, nakakalungkot po kasing isipin na um, alam niyo po yun na nasa gitna tayo ng pandemic and then um, parang napakahirap pong i-prioritize ng paglo-load natin ng para po makakonect sa internet. Um, yung, mis yung mismong pangkain na lamang natin ay ipangkoconnect pa natin sa internet. So yun po, ayun po yung mga nakita namin na existing problem um, based doon sa result ng survey na isinagawa namin. Next po. So um, I gathered some of the news um, or headlines that top the, um, the Philippine news um, in our country. So Una, um, inamin na po mismo ng CHED na only 20% of the state universities or colleges are ready for online classes. So that was three months ago. So it is according to Commission on Higher Education, Pro, um, Prospero de Vera III. So yeah, next po. Students of top four PH schools urge CHED to suspend online classes. Ano po yung mga dahilan? Um, yung mga dahilan po na mga... Um, top four schools na ito, eh ito rin po yung sumasalamin sa dahilan ng mga kabataan. Una po ay naniniwala kami na internet connection and learning devices continued to be a privilege up to this day, placing those with poor internet access at a disadvantage when it comes to online classes. Ikalawa po, um, this coronavirus outbreaks affect, affect the community um, it, it, it may be difficult for students to focus on academic requirements, especially if they are already struggling physically, mentally, and financially. Others may be coping with household preparations in light of the restriction imposed by the lockdown. Next po. Ato, ito yung pinaka-famous na balita na talagang feeling ko sumasalamin sa sitwasyon na meron sa internet connection dito sa ating bansa. During pandemic, students climbs a mountain to send class requirement. Though hindi naman pinipilit ng professor, uh, this is from the Mapua University student, a uh, Mapua Uni University student. So, though hindi naman siya pinipilit ng professor, pero sabi niya, um, however, they said that they were never forced by the professor to send the class requirements immediately, but she sent their, uh, hers anyway so she could move and do other things. So ang tingin po namin dito, sana po magawa natin ng um, paraan na magkaroon ng um, internet connection sa mga liblib na lugar sa ating bansa. Next po. Ito po, um, yung ex-UP Chancellor, um, sabi po niya, the government should give SUC more resources for online learning. Tingin ko po, ito po yung maaring maging panawagan namin na sana po dagdagan natin yung budget para sa SUC for the online um, learning, for, the, for more resources, dagdagan yung resources for online learning. For former University of the Philippines Diliman Chancellor My, uh, Michael Tan, the government should allot more resources for state universities and colleges or SUCs because most classes will be shifting online during the coronavirus. Next po. Yan. So ngayon, ipapakita ko naman sa inyo yung naging hakbang ng PNU upang sa gayon ay maibsan ang paghihirap ng bawat isang estudyante sa bagong kadaw yan. So meron po kami tinatawag na Project Tanglaw na pinangunahan po ng, um, ng aming um, ng heads ng PNU. Ito po ay tinatawag na Technology Assistance in the New Normal 
through gadget for learning and work. So, kita po namin dito. So, tatlo lang po yung sinama ko dito. Um, pero lahat po ng campuses namin, there are five campuses for from PNU na nagkakandak po ng Project Tanglaw. So, meron pong sa PNU Manila na naka-raise na po ng 117,300 pesos. Sa PNU North Luzon na may uh, 45, ay PNU South Luzon na may 45,000 po na na-raise and sa PNU Mindanao na may 185,560 pesos po na na-raise. Next po. Yan. So, meron din pong mga isinasagawang benefit concert in support for the Project Tanglaw. So, ito po nangyari po yung sa PNU SG Mindanao. Um, dito po ay yung one PNU, one show, one cause. And of course, the um, paparating po na benefit concert for Project Tanglaw ng PNU Manila USC or University Student Council. Next po. Yan. So kahapon po, nagkaroon po ng distribution ng mga, um, ng mga toolkits para po sa gagamitin ng mga estudyante sa PNU North Luzon. So, nagtala sa kasaysayan ng inang pamantasan sa matagumpay na pamamahagi ng edubag. So, tinatawag po nila yung edubag sa panahon ng pandemia. Next po. So, yan. So, ang, ang action naman po na isinasagawa ng PNU Manila is meron pong ipapadala na course toolkit. Dito po ay nakalagay sa USB or drive yung uh, mga modules na gagamitin po namin. So, yun. Um, next po. Ayan. So evidently, kita po talaga, so nabanggit naman po kanina, na talagang nangangailangan ang bawat isang estudyante and alarming po na napakarami pong donation drive ang isinasagawa individually or as a group ng mga estudyante. Dahil bakit? Dahil alam nila na kailangan, um, dahil alam nila na um, education nga po, um, is kailangan pa rin natin to despite ng pandemic na nangyayari sa atin. Um, at dito nga po ay nagka, uh, marami pong donation drive. Imagine po um, we are just 3,000 plus of um, tawag dito of population in, in PNU. And even the freshies po, the incoming freshmen are conducting their own um, donation drive um, para lang po matulungan yung mga kapwa kaklase nila or kapwa PNU1 na nangangailangan ng tulong. Tulad nitong newbie para kay B. So ito po yung uh, donation drive ng um, 1-9. And then meron din po sa um, Bayonihan, yung sa biology students po ng PNU. Ayan, then may descending din po. So ayun naman po yung sa 1-2. And then Pisa kalinga ng P6 uh, major students ng PNU. Um, meaning po, um, ang mga estudyante ay nananawagan sa ating um, sa kinauukulan sa mga um, sa mga sa gobyerno na sana ay magkaroon tayo ng mga hakbangin na tutulong upang maibsan ang problema na kinakaharap ng education sector sa panahon ng pandemia. Alam namin na hindi um, alam namin na mahalaga pa rin ang edukasyon sa panahon ng pandemya kung kaya sana nananawagan kami ng pagtutulungan pagtutulungan sa uh, mga networks na maaari sana ay mag mabigyan ang mga um, students ng mga promo na maaaring gamitin para sa uh, pag internet nila pagtutulungan sa mga networks na mas Ma ma maikalat ang mga signal sa mga liblib na lugar na kung saan nakasituate ang mga students. Yun lamang po at maraming salamat. Uh, maraming salamat po. Alright. Thank you, uh, Ms. Christian Onera, current event chairperson of the PNU University Student Council and is now running off for the position of chairperson. Kikita niyo, uh, sa binanggit no napakaganda ng presentation ni Mr. Onera no binahagi niya na uh, students of PNU are willing no they are willing to study but the problem is yung economic divide no na hirap sa even nga ngayon nararanasan natin yung connectivity issues and and some some and not actually some but many students not only in PNU are uh, facing those uh, other issues sa bahay no na uh, 
makatulong sa family and yung pagpe-prepare pa all thing and it's clear no that PNU, the students of PNU are clamoring no for uh, assistance for, for the government no, na pa bigay na learning materials load assistance and all the other material means uh, for the for their education here in the uh, in the new normal so thank you for that presentation no uh, Mr. Onera now um at this point uh balikan natin si Miss Shari kanina Miss Shari Balikod from the University of Eastern Philippines uh Miss Shari um is your audio okay Hello Miss Shari Hello Miss Shari okay na ba ang kanyang audio Ayan. So, dyan na po yung presentation niya. Si Miss Shari, okay na ba? Pa, she here? Ito. Hello? Hello, ayan. Hello? Hello? Hello, hello? Naririnig mo kami? Yes po, apo. Ayan, sige. So, pwede, pwede mo na ituloy, Shari, yung iyong presentation? Sige po, yes po. So, um, nag... Hello Shari. Na nawala yata yung audio niya ulit. <clears throat> Hello Miss Shari. Okay, uh, nawala yata ulit siya. Siguro pa inform na lang siya ulit. Uh, sa ating mga organizers na wala ulit si Miss Shari. Ayan. Wala yata siya sa Zoom natin. Ayan. Hello, Miss Shari. Ano ba siya? Hello? Hello, ayan. Ayan. Kahit huwag kayo na mag- Okay. Uh, is it okay, Shari, if di ka na mag-video, kahit audio na lang. Para, ayan. Thank you. Sige. Hello? Shari? Uh... Uh, hindi na namin mag-i. Okay. Pa Paano daw po sa audio niya? Kaya ni siya po. Inalaw. Hello, Miss Shari. Okay. Okay. Sige. Um... So, okay na ba? Uh, nakabalik na ba si Ms. Shari for her presentation? Hello, Ms. Shari. Okay. Um, habang wala pa si uh, Ms. Shari, wait. Okay. So, habang wala pa si Mary ulit, uh, I use sina yung hintay nating maayos yung kanyang uh, uh, audio no so ngayon tawagin naman natin ang third na speaker from the student sector no uh, kanina narinig natin ang isang uh, sharing mula naman sa SUC no through Mr. Christian Onera from PNU 
Now let's look at uh, a perspective naman from uh, from a private school or private HEI from University of the East. So ngayon tatawagin ko si Miss Mariela Jovel Toledo, Vice President of the College of Arts and Sciences Student Council of the University of East Manila. So hello Mariela. Hello po. Naririnig po hello. ako? Yes po. Ayan. So good afternoon everyone to all who is watching this uh, live video and to all the participants uh, na nandito ngayon sa Zoom and especially to our organizers. Ayan. Thank you po for inviting us and for uh, initiating this event na magiging makatuturan dahil uh, it will be helpful especially for us na uh, nag-utilize nitong uh, new normal learning system. So our topic is the, the tertiary education situation of youth and students among, uh, amid the COVID-19. So next slide po. Ayan, so ipapakilala ko muna po pala yung sarili ko. Medyo nakalimutan. So I am Mariela Jovel Toledo from the University of the East Manila. I am a member of the Kaisaka political party. And I am also the uh, Vice President of the College of Arts and Sciences Student Council. And I am currently third year college taking up Bachelor of Arts in International Studies. Ayan. So, uh, dadako po tayo dito sa ating uh, presentation. Uh, nakikita po natin dito uh, our situation. And our situation right now is this uh, new normal learning system. And uh, this new normal learning system, uh, it was presented to us. Hindi po natin to uh, in-expect na mangyayari dahil ang plan po natin sa ating uh, school year, uh, this school year ay uh, makakapag-face-to-face -face tayo, makakapag-gather tayo to conduct this uh, kind of events. And as well as uh, makaka uh, meet natin yung mga ating uh, peers and classmates and all. And since siguro, ano, kung face-to-face -face tayo ngayon, siguro dahil long weekend, ay ano, nasa short vacation tayo ngayon na nag enjoy sa Tagaytay or Baguio, ganyan. Pero it happened the other way around. So, ayun, no one expected this situation to happen talaga. So, we have to cope up and improve our um, coping mechanisms. So, um... Itatakal ko po yung nangyari ito sa um, within the university. Um, this summer, nag-conduct po kami ng summer online classes. Uh, ito po ay uh, kinundak ng aming administration. Uh, kahit na kami po ay tutol dito dahil hindi pa nga po handa ang ating uh, university and as well as our um, students. But then again, they... Um, push through with the summer online classes, which yung summer online classes naging benchmark siya, naging practice, naging simulation ng uh, itong formal formal uh, learning itong online classes this school year 2020 and 2021. And yung mga problems na nag-arise po doon from the summer classes, yung po yung ginawang basis ng ating mga university para po uh, matugunan yung pansin ng ating um, online classes ngayong school year 2020 and 2021. And as for us, uh, tinitignan po namin siya na parang katulad siya ng K-12 nung pinatupan po yung K-12 dahil ayun nga po, kami, bilang kami po yung mga pioneer batch, parang ganun din po yung nangyari na sa summer class para naging practice siya nitong pinaka-opening uh, ng school year ng 2020-2021. So next slide po. Ayan, so ito po, uh, nag-list po ako dito ng ayan, very straight to the point ng mga dilemma ng mga students from the uh, higher education uh, institutions. First and foremost, of course, um, hindi talaga uh, may iwasan is yung internet and gadgets. Yung internet uh, talagang uh, isa siya sa pinaka-main uh, problem ng ating bansa. And in fact, pati yung mga uh, nagbabayad ng every month sa mga internet providers, especially sa Globe, sa PLDT. PLDT. And ako po personally, uh, nakaka-experience po kami dito na hindi po natin siya masasabi na unstable kasi nga po um, may dumadating na times na uh, bigla na lang po maglalag in the middle of classes tapos bigla may mag appear uh, your internet is unstable. So what 
what more yung mga nandun pa po, yung mga wala talagang connection at all, yung na, nakaasa lang sa day pa connection na, which ang laki ng kinakain ng day pa connection kapag gumagamit ka ng Zoom, ng Google Meet, ng Canvas, and so the like. So ayun po yung pinaka-isang uh, problem natin. And next din po, of course, yung mga no signal, especially yung mga nasa far-flung areas. Sila po talaga yung isa sa mga naging hirap ngayon. And wala rin naman po silang choice kundi um, just, ano, just accept the fact na, ano, na wala na talagang uh, signal na talagang aasa na lang sila na yung sisend sa kanila yung PDF, ganyan makiki-open kasi super hirap po talaga ng ating connection. And second, yung gadgets po natin. And um, kahit po sabihin natin na lahat tayo may smartphone, hindi naman po yun sapat dahil kailangan po natin mag-multitask. Habang nakiki, uh, pag video call tayo, whenever kapag sa synchronous sessions, hindi po yun sapat para uh, masabi mo na makakapag-participate ka in online classes. Kailangan mo rin na laptop or na mga tablets or ng iPad. And minsan kapag sobrang bagal nung, uh, nung klase, nung, nung mga gadgets, hindi ka pa rin makakakonect na maayos, hindi ka pa rin makakapag-perform na maayos. Kaya ayun, isa rin po yun sa mga uh, problems na kinakaharap ng ating mga students. So ayan yung second uh, na banggit. Ayan. Yung second po yung, uh, ayan pa rin yung sa access of students in far-flung areas. Yun nga po yung sinabi ko kanina sa so signal, um, signal connection. And yun nga po yung sinabi po kanina ni Christian na Uh, marami po students na umaakit sa bundok para lang po makakuha ng uh, ma malakas na signal. And yes, you Filipinos are resilient, but it shouldn't be romanticized na oo, resilient tayo mga Filipino. We can um, adapt to every uh, challenges na binibigay sa atin. Kasi it only reflects the sad uh, reality, the sad reality of our country that is facing right now. Yun po yung uh, de deprivation natin sa fast and reliable internet connection. Uh, third naman po is yung mga skill-based program. Well, lahat naman po ng programs natin ay skill-based. Kailangan natin ma-hone yung mga skills natin in order for us to be better students kapag um, uh, we step out of our university. But um, sobrang hira po, lalong-lalo na yung sa mga medical allied na fields, medical allied programs. Uh, yung mga engineering programs, yung mga architecture, which uh, kailangan nila talaga yung face-to-face, -face, yung hand-to-hand hand na mahahawakan nila yung kanilang mga uh, paraphernal, paraphernalias, yung kanilang mga uh, equipment. So, uh, mahirap po talaga yan. Um, sa amin po, sa UE, sa Un University of the East, we are lucky kasi... Uh, yung din po namin, uh, dinifer niya yung mga laboratory subjects ng HRM sa amin. Kasi po, uh, yun nga po, hindi pa natin sure kung kailan yung face-to-face. Uh, -face. So, dinifer po na uh, sa next sem. But then, uh, hindi din po natin sure kung makakapag face-to-face -face po tayo next, uh, next semester. So, naka-on hold po yung mga um, kailangan natin i-take up. And wala po talaga as of now, assurance kung kailan talaga tayo pwede mag face-to-face. And um, wala rin naman po tayong choice kundi uh, uh, i-embrace ito kasi most of us ang magiging mga breadwinners ng family natin and we don't want to uh, waste time kasi kailangan din natin na gusto din natin na makagraduate ng on time para po makahelp sa ating mga families. So yun po yung isa sa mga um, problems sa skill-based programs. Fourth uh, challenge or dilemma is uh, this setup is not only challenging for the students but the professors as well. So kahit uh, sabihin po natin yung mga professors natin uh, dapat uh, bahala sila, uh, we also have to take into consideration our professors. Uh, personally po kami po, uh, meron po kami mga professor, professors na hindi po sila teki, hindi po nila gamay ang Zoom, hindi po nila gamay ang Google Meet, uh, hindi po nila alam yung mga technicalities ng online classes. So pati po sila nahihirapan and pati din po sila uh, nahihirapan sa internet connection. Meron po kami isang professor na nakaraan, uh, lagi po siya na-disconnect, lagi po siyang choppy. And then, ang ginawa niya lang po, uh, sa kagustuhan niya mag-discuss, 
tinipe niyo na lang po yung buong discussion which is super effort and makikita mo talaga yung dedication ng professor na gusto magturo. Ah, uh, yun para lang po uh, may bahagi yung knowledge na need namin ng mga students na um, ma-receive. And fifth po, ang nilagay ko po dito ay conducive spaces for learning. So, hindi naman po lahat ng uh, ba ang not all houses can be called home. Kasi yung iba po sa atin nakikitira lang sa ating mga uh, relatives and hindi po ito nagiging uh, conducive space for us to learn. Kasi syempre, andito rin po yung mga responsibilities natin sa bahay. Hindi po natin na pwede iwanan na lang basta-basta. So nakaka-apekto din po yun sa environment natin whenever we are online schooling. And then yung sixth and seventh dilemma, It, uh, is this uh, physically draining and mentally challenging. So, hindi lang po ang physical bodies natin ang uh, nahihirapan. Well, in fact, mas nakakapagod nga po ang online classes kung, kung nakaka-relate po tayo lahat. Pero yun po, uh, mas nakakapagod po talaga ang online classes. Uh, not to mention yung um, constraint sa eyes natin na pwedeng uh, ika- Uh, labo ng ating mga mata or yung mga uh, likod natin na naka-slouch siya tayo, ganyan, nagiging kuba na tayo. And also, our mental health na hindi naman natin uh, basta-basta dapat um, uh, just neglect it. Kasi uh, meron din tayo mga anxieties that happen around us. Especially ngayon na alarming na po yung um, COVID positive cases sa country natin na basta-basta na lang tumataas at hindi din natin alam kung kailan tayo tataman. Para nag-iintay na lang po tayo ng time kung kailan tayo matamaan dahil hindi po siya masyado natutugo tutugo na ng pansin. And we also have reached that point where in nag nagkakaroon na rin po tayo ng anxiety kapag wala po tayong ginagawa Uh, pag nag-aasynchronous po tayo or kapag uh, weekdays on, and even holidays, ayun po, nag, uh, nagtataka na rin po tayo pag Ay, wala akong ginagawa, ganyan. <laughs> Tapos only to find out, may nakaligtaan pala tayong deadline. So, ayun, nakaka-apekto po talaga siya sa uh, mental health natin and lahat po tayo walang immunity dito. Even the diplomats na may diplomatic immunity, wala pong immunity dito sa kinakaharap natin. So, ayan po, uh, is, ayan po ang uh, seven main dilemma ng ating mga stu students uh, with regards to the online classes in the higher education educational institution. So, next po. Ayan. So, a next problem po other than this, uh, other than mga nabanggit ko kanina, is ito pong tuition and other fees increase, which is very, very controver controversial every year. Every year po, uh, uh, kinakaharap po namin itong problem na to, itong challenge na to, wherein yung mga uh, higher uh, institutions, mga universities, nag impose po sila ng TOFI na sinasawag itong tuition and other fees in fees which is hindi makatarungan. And in fact, ang university po namin ay nag-impose ng uh, tuition and other fee in fees amidst the pandemic. And ito pa mga dagdag na uh, fees na to, it is very unjust. It, these are unjustifiable kasi nasa pambihirang situation nga po tayo, hindi man lang na-defer, hindi man lang naisip na administration na uh, many were, uh, yung mga parents namin na nawalan ng trabaho and walang pang um, sustain dun sa mga tuition fees namin. So, next slide po. So, ito po yung Uh, bago po mag-open uh, yung school year 2020-2021, uh, ginader po ng administration yung uh, student council sa buong uh, UE Manila and Caloocan. Nagkaroon po sila ng dialogue via Microsoft Teams. Kasama po dito yung lahat ng presidents po ng uh, councils and of course yung university student council. And together with our college deans, together with uh, the other stakeholders and also uh, our chief academic officer, Dr. Esther A. Garcia. So ito po yung makikita nyo po na figure sa left side. Ito po yung mga UE tuition fee per unit. So ito po, um, obviously malaki pa rin siya kahit na online classes naman po. 
uh, eto po sa amin po sa CAS, eto po ang per ang um, pag 21 units na walabas po siya ng 37,000. Ayan, 20 units po. And hindi pa po kasama yung mga miscellaneous fees. And isa rin po ito sa mga controversial dahil sinabi po sa amin ng administration na uh, they already lessened 700 pesos only. And kinuha po, tinanggal po nila doon yung, ito po, makikita nyo po sa um, pinaka yung babang picture na blue, na number one. No increase in student accident insurance fee. Don. Don is our official publication and the student government. So all in all po yun po yung uh, nilesen nila sa buong miscellaneous fee which is 700 pesos only. However, mataas pa rin po ang miscellaneous fees natin, namin dahil makikita nyo po dito. And for example, dito po sa taas ng uh, right, right image. Yung energy po, energy fee po ay nagkakahalaga ng 1,273 which is kami po uh, ginagamit namin yung sarili namin energy sa bahay. Kami po nagbabayad monthly and hindi naman po namin na-utilize yung energy fee dahil hindi naman po kami pumapasok. Ang excuse po sa amin ng administration is that Um, kailangan pa rin namin bayaran yung, yung, yung uh, energy fee na yan kasi nakakontrata po sila sa Mayralco. So whether they whether we use it or not, we will still gonna pay for the energy fee. And second po, makikita nyo po figure dito, yung internet and technology, super mahal, 1,800. Katumbas na po yung binabayad namin dito sa bahay ng internet. And pati rin po yung library namin. 1,700. Ayan, hindi din naman po namin na utilize kasi hindi po kami pumapasok sa mismong university. And dit, et, eto po, lastly, dito po tayo nagkakatalo dun sa laboratory fee ranging from 198 pesos to 9,351. So, kawawa po talaga, lalong-lalo na nga po yung sinasabi ko kanina ng mga skill-based um, programs na nangangailangan. Um, mentioning the doctor of dental medicine, ayan, kung makikita nyo po dito yung, yung tuition fee per unit nila. And kung ipapatong nyo pa po yung miscellaneous fees, aabot siya ng 70,000 per sem. So, sobrang bigat po talaga nung uh, ito, nung uh, tuition fee. Isa po ito talaga sa reality namin sa mga private uh, schools uh, dito sa Manila. And pwede po pa balik dun sa uh, previous slide. Thank you po. Sa previous slide po. Ayan. So ito po, nagkaroon po kami ng coalition. Itong coalition na to, uh, it, uh, it comprises of the, it comprises the uh, student councils from the UE Manila, UE Caloocan, and the UERM. So nagkaroon po kami ng um, um, collaboration para po i-junk itong two fee na to. Actually po, ang pinaka um, amount, pinaka uh, figure is 4.325% po ang pinaas nung aming tuition fee this school year. So ito po yung nilalayo ng United. Ito po yung pangalan ng coalition namin. It is to refund the unused fees. Ito po yung mga nandun sa previous pa na semester. Hindi po namin natapos ng school year. Ayan, it should be refunded. Uh, the, the tuition fee and other uh, miscellaneous fees should be reduced and other unjustifiable fees must be rejected. So, ito po yung um, pinaforward namin sa administration and gumawa din po kami ng um, various um, appeals to the administration and in fact, ni-raise na po namin siya sa CHED dahil nagkaroon po kami ng email barrage and before pa po, before pa po nung lockdown ay nag email na po kami sa CHED para po Uh, tulungan kami na hindi na i-impose na po itong um, TOFI but then again, nagtuloy pa rin po siya kahit na naging, nag-lockdown po tayo. So ayun po, walang pakundangan na nagkaroon po kami ng tuition and other fee increase. So ayun po, sa, sa mga um, problems talaga ng aming university. Ah, hindi lang po ng aming university but also the other schools pero um, mas swerte po yung other schools dahil nagtanong pa nung din ako um, sa ibang uh, private school such as FEU 
UST, Adamson, um, CEU, hindi po sila nagkaroon ng tuition fee and other increase. Tapos uh, yung ibang universities po nagkaroon ng rebate sa kanila mga tuition fees yung mga hindi po nagamit. Uh, Nag-range po siya sa 10,000 to 13,000. Imagine na medyo malaking bagay na rin po compared naman sa 700 pesos. So ayun nga po, uh, itong tofi na rin po ito, uh, nagiging problem siya dahil nare-regulate po siya every year. Kasi nga po, uh, meron po tayong tinatawag na autonomous status ng ating mga university. Ayan, meron po silang uh, bill or meron po silang guidelines on how they will impose the tuition and other fee increases. So, ayun po. Uh, next po. Next pa po. Ayan, so just, as, just like the uh, PNU's initiatives, meron din po kami, uh, tinataw, uh, meron din po kami within our university. In fact, nag-umpensa po siya dito sa Save a Student sa Gift Ka Mag-Aral Project. Uh, ito po kasi, uh, this school year, nawala rin po yung programs for the student assistance na scholarship and small, uh, small allowance lang. Ayun, nawala po lahat ng pro yung program na yun. Kaya naglayan po yung aming universities, uh, yung aming mga... Uh, Students from our university na gumawa nitong uh, initiative, ayun nga po, uh, napagtag napagtagumpayan naman po itong Save a Student dahil naka-enroll po sila ng 12 uh, student assistants this school year and naka-help din naman po dahil yung iba po sa kanila ay scholar, 50% scholar. So yung 50% na lang po yung binubuo nila ngayong, um, ngayong uh, sem semester. Tapos eto po makikita na natin sa uh, left left side, itong connect a student sa amin, uh, sa amin po itong mga students from the College of Arts and Sciences uh, kaya po siya CAS and connect a student dahil nagpo-fundraising din po kami on uh, to provide uh, pocket qualifies for our uh, fellow students this school year and meron po kami ongoing raffle, mag-raffle po kami tomorrow and naka raise na po kami ng roughly nasa 20,000 na po and yun, madami-dami na po kami mabibigyan ng pocket wifi with load sa aming mga subordinates, sa aming mga classmates and also we have other fundraising drives dito po sa uh, labas ng um, uh, lo loob ng aming university this is the Open Tub Project, Kabalikat and Helping Hand. Ito po sa mga engineering to. Ayan, medyo VT yung title. Helping Hand. Ayan, mga nagpro-provide din po sila na, ay nag-release din po sila ng funds to provide pocket wifi and uh, gadget, tablets, ganun. Tablets in specific. And ito po nakikita natin na word, piso para sa laptop. Uh, hindi po siguro bago sa atin tong tagline na to, piso para sa laptop, laptop. And everywhere you can see this piso para sa laptop, uh, sa Twitter, sa Facebook, ang dami pong nagko-comment sa mga posts ng uh, sikat na tao ng mga ng mga um, ng mga wait lang po. ng mga personalities, ayan po, ayan, sorry, ng mga personal, personalities, ayan, nagko-comment po sila sa mga um, posts, which is very alarming nga rin po, yung tulad nga po ng sinabi kanina, kasi nga po, um, this shows the sad reality of our country na in their own little way, in their own little means, talagang um, kukuhanin nila yung yung opportunity na yon to raise funds for their um, gadgets, for their connection talaga. Kaya po kapag may makikita po tayong ganito, let's try to help them. Let's uh, try to extend our help to them. So, ayun po. Uh, next slide. Ayan. So, this is our message to the Philippine government. So, babasahin ko na lang po. Ayan. We, students, call for your attention to address and resolve the issues, especially on the internet access that our country is deprived from having a fast and stable one. We, students, plead to freeze the tuition and other fees in fees. We call upon the CHED and the other institutions involved to impose memorandum order to stop the increase and adjust the fees to which it will be maximized 
well. Sapat, nararapat, at para sa lahat. Convert unused piece on modular, modular reading materials, hand it out using flash drive, and improve the logistical system in every university. May also the scholarship services be expanded to cater more in need students and may stipends or allowances be distrib distributed as soon as possible to be utilized by the students with their online classes. Together, let's move forward. Together, let us not leave any student behind. Walang maiiwan sa laban. To God be the glory po. Maraming salam. Okay. Thank you so much no. Napakaganda ng message ni Miss um uh, dito sa ano sa presentation nila from UE. And uh, maganda no balik uh, bal bigyan nating diin yung binanggit niya kanina about sa even the professors no are suffering as well or having a hard time ngayong uh, paparating tayo sa new normal. It's not just the students no but also the professors who are experiencing difficulties no ngayong panahon ng pandemic and uh, nagsa-struggle niyong uh, sa problems sa education. And i-highlight din natin ano, yung kanilang panawagan with regards to ano, sa nananatiling mataas na tuition fees ng mga estudyante sa UE and um, napakahirap nun ngayon ano, given the fact na we're in a pandemic and maraming mga pamilya ngayon ang uh, economically challenged. No? So maraming salamat uh, Ms. Mariela Toledo, Vice President ng uh, College of Arts and Sciences Student Council ng UE Manila. Okay, so ngayon, uh, baka pwede na nating balikan ulit si Ms. Uh, Shari from uh, UEP. Ayan. Hello, Ms. Uh, Hello? Shari. Ayan. Hello, Hello po. Ayan, okay na. Hi. Okay na. Finally. Mm. So, uh, I'll continue na lang po dun sa 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 na stop kanina. So, basically, I was talking kanina na dito sa provincial QCs, mahina yung internet connection namin. Well, naman kanina, I had problems with my uh, with my internet. So, parang ganun. Um, uh, tapos, uh, if yung ibang SUCs or, or yung ibang SUCs yung uh the city as you see they have you students nila mostly have their smartphones we still have a lot of students dito na kaya lang nila maki kaya na lang kaya lang nila makuhang gadget yung keypad the phones yung analog phones because nga uh, sa lugar nila hindi naman supported yung yung smartphones because walang signal ng internet so uh, uh, there is also a problem in more pro most probably hindi din nila kayang uh, hindi din nila kayang afford ng laptops so yan yung pinaka one of the bigger problems with uh, concerns learning concerns of students dito sa provincial SUCs also, magiging problem yung electricity because we have island towns especially in the Visayas and Mindanao area electricity is a problem because yung na provide sa kanila is generator na uh, nagiging rotational yung uh, yung flow ng, ng electricity, sa, electricity sa kanila like uh, 12 hours lang from 12 noon to 12 midnight. So if ever mag man ng synchronous na uh, learning kahit gustuhin mo pa man na student sometimes it would be a big problem because halimbawa 12 noon pa magkakaroon ng ilang Nyo, and usually din kasi sa mga ganitong, uh, ganitong areas, kung kailan, uh, if, walang, if walang kuryente, mahina din yung internet sa inyo. So, most of the time, maghihintay ka na magkaroon ng kuryente sa inyo para magkaroon ka ng at least man lang load yung Facebook mo. Parang ganun. Also, there is also a, uh, yung next problem in access to modules and submission of documents. So, uh, yung, yung provincial SUCs kasi, uh, we have uh, taken the case of UEP. 
they, we cater mostly, uh, yung university cater most sa students na tied in the municipality surrounding kung saan siya cater. So basically, yung UEP caters to, mostly cater students na are, na nasa Northern Samaria. And yung nangyari was that nagkaroon ng municipal links. Municipal links, they are the employees ng university para sila yung magdidistribute ng modules dun sa estudyante. Tapos, sila din yung magbabalik ng modules na yun. Answer ng students, pabalik doon sa university. The problem is, nagkakaroon tayo ng, na, nagkakaroon ng problem yung municipal namin sa pagdating na sa transportation. Uh, so, summer kasi, parang uh, northern summer, yung transport expenses, dumoble. Tapos meron ding, meron ding places na, halimbawa, uh, multi, uh, three, four hours biyahe from, from municipalities papunta doon sa university, scheduled lang trips nila or limited lang yung trips papunta sa, uni, papunta sa central town kung saan nakaka-situate yung, yung uh, SUC. Tapos, yun na nga, dodoble yung pamasahe. That's the very big problem. I also asked yung ibang uh, SR of TVs uh, around around Thais area. They told me na kiging problem nila because kanila naman kasi kiosks yung nilalagay. So, limited yung kiosk and also yung students mismo yung pupunta doon sa kiosk. Sometimes, hindi na na estudyante kung asan yung kiosk. So, yun yung nagiging problem talaga. Next naman is yung pro, uh, yung nagiging problem with the evaluation of student performance. Pre-COVID times, it was easier for both the student and the uh, professor to evaluate student performance because you can uh, you can give inputs face-to-face -face and dyan yung estudyante and dyan si prof. However, because yun na nga, you're forced to stay at home and nandiyon mahirap na yung interconnection mo. Minsan hindi ka magkaintindi yung prof kasi si prof, hindi, masya, hindi siya savvy. Minsan ikaw din, hindi tech, tech savvy. Parang ganun. Uh, nagka, nag, nagkaka, nagkakaroon ng problema to meet, be, uh, meet in the middle yung both yung students and yung professors. So there's a question of academic integrity. Kasi nga, Haroon tayo ng problem with the evaluation of student performance. So, technically, parang na compromise mo yung academic integrity. And also because, let's face it, hindi lahat ng estudyante pare-parehas yung styles. So, may mga estudyante, ito na lang, let's look at it this way. Face to face, may mga estudyante na nababagsak. What more kung yung student, ngayong time na, hindi na kayo nagkakausap ng professor or you consult professor in in the way na ha, nakoconsult mo siya dati pre-COVID. So, mas magiging mahirap mag-approach is student kay professor because nga, ako parang takot ako kay prof kasi ganito, ganyan. Parang tapos yung uh, learning style ko is different. Like, I need I need to see, I need hands-on na, na application of the lesson para ma para ma internalize ko siya para maintindihan ko siya so yan yung uh, yan yung things that we are seeing magiging co concern ng students during this pandemic next okay so um yung concerns of the bell i medyo medyo specific concern for some students so i'll go to yung my uh, under the microscope, we uh, have laboratory classes. So, uh, I mentioned ni UE Manila Rep, na si ni Maria, na yung, yung laboratory classes and ng, ng, ng students. May, ta, may mga times na pwedeng, pwedeng ma-differ yung, yung laboratory skills but for the for those na halimbawa 
yung mga IT or computer related subject hindi mo siya pang mahirap siyang i-defer because technically mag assume yung yung professor mo na you have a laptop kasi yung computer related uh, computer related subjects yun yung kailangan laptops or like desktop computers but then hindi lahat ng estudyante cater yon also pagdating naman sa medical year mga life science gay ng biology and chemistry or something like that uh intindihan ko yan because of a major those uh programs i'm majoring those programs so hirap kasi kahit natin okay magkaroon tayo ng microbiology classes although pwede mong ma-separate yung laboratory class mo and then lecture classes mo mahirap mo siyang i separate because kailangan so para mas madali mo ma-understand kung ano yung pinag-uusapan niyo on the lecture sometimes you really have to to look kailangan kailan mo mo talaga makita kung anong anong may microbe yung yung you have to to look for there's also when it comes to experimental researches mahirap ang mag-conduct ng experimental researches mo sa bahay because wala kang reagent, wala kang equipment, wala kang laboratory gadgets. So, ganun. The next one naman is yung facilities and resources of the university. So, basically, si uh, university, uh, it's a common problem to prevent species na outdated yung facilities namin. Uh, hindi, hindi ko naman yan because it's observed naman sa almost all provincial SUCs. Nagiging problem yung facilities and yung uh, facilities namin because pre-COVID nga, outdated na siya. What more nga na nagkakaroon na nag uh, na need na i-online lahat. So, mas nagiging ano, mas mas na, mas na pronounce yung problem with the is kung paano paano i-utilize ng university yung resources niya to cater to the, uh, to the learning uh, learning needs of students. Also, ito din, nagkakaroon ng influx of freshmen and transferees to provincial SPs. Napansin namin to this enrollment. Because, uh, yung university kasi uh, pre-COVID times, kaya niyang i-cater lahat almost lahat ng students na mag apply sa kanya kasi mostly yung mag apply lang din sa kanya yung mga far-flung areas medyo yung mga less privileged na students. Uh, yung medyo kaya naman kasi yung mga pamilya naman, yung mga kayang makapag-aral outside of of the nor of northern summer, kung kayang makapag-aral sa syudad, they tend to uh, enroll na lang dun sa uh, universities sa syudad. But then, because of the COVID scare, most ng studa studyante, they resort to apply to the SUC, to the nearest SUC sa nila para masa nila yung COVID. So that's what tend to UAP. Yung UAP can to 3,600 and what happened was nagkaroon yung applicants applicants pa lang dinaaccept pa lang sila ng application forms for freshmen umab ng 6,400 if I'm not mistaken parang ganun. So yun yung naging isang pinakamalaki problem ng university. How to rank all those students. Kasi hindi, na, hindi naman pwede nang makapagbigay ng uh, entrance exam yung, uh, yung university because bawal na nga pumunta yung estudyante sa university. So, yan yung naging malaking problem. Nagkaroon ng problem with pag-release ng result and all those things na yung doon naman sa specific concerns ng students, we have foreign exchange students na uh, these are isolated concerns, but uh, medyo worrying na siya because hindi lang sa university, hindi university, sa UAP nakikaroon ng ganitong problem. We all, I also uh, consulted other uh, 
region na meron din sa problem with those students na andun abroad because they were last year nagkaroon sila ng internship or foreign exchange programs tapos uh, mag-end ngayong year ngayong year na yung contract nila but then because lockdown hindi sila na hindi pa sila nakakauwi so yun yung isang problem na i think hindi yung university hindi niya kayang isolve yun if international na yung uh, international na yung usapan na hindi kayang isolve ni university na siya mag-isa also ito yung medyo uh, glaring para sa akin it's the mental psychological intervention para sa students ang daming uh, ang dami kong na receive din na uh, pm sa akin were very anxious pan, sa pag-start ng klase sa kung ano pa ano ano pa mga situations nila because nahihirapan na sila sa they are nagkakahirapan sila sa life na nila kasi ngayon because ayun financially they're struggling mentally they're struggling because they, sometimes they, hindi nila alam kung saan sila huhugot ng lahas to go through with ganun ganun so parang i think kela isa pang kailangan na i-address ng university to ensure the mental and psychological intervention of our students. next po okay so eto naman yung projects namin as the UUSE um well yung uh, yung other yung other universities kanina na present um they have to donate yung laptops and other IT equipments para sa students nila. I was able to converse naman kasi with our admin and uh, dun din na present din to sa BOR meeting that yung internally generated projects, yung IGP budget na university was realigned na yung 12,000, if I'm not mistaken, 12,400 plus uh, na budget, na IGP budget would be realigned to provide for the production of the modules and yung laptops and other uh, IT IT gadgets na pwedeng ng students and it will be situated na dun sa municipal links. Ang problem is, hanggang ngayon, wala pa tayo, uh, wala pa ulit, wala na ulit akong up nung nangyari dun, but yun yung assurance naman na binigay sa akin President namin na mag-provide sila ng laptops and uh, ways to connect the na uh, the students via municipal links. Mag-provide daw sila ng laptops and internet. So as the USC University Student Council, ginawa naman namin because nagkaroon na ng confirmation for enrollment via forms. Marami pa rin students na hindi yung nga hindi sila connect. They only have uh, signal para sa pag-send ng messages. So, you know, I mean, mag-send na lang sila message I mean, through text and then kami na lang yung mag-send uh, ng confirmation sa kanila uh, sa respective colleges nila so that they can be uh, in also, um, we have uh, we're planning to launch an online peer tutorial to help the students with their uh, subject needs for academic needs and yung kung ano pa man yung e-research nila. Next po. Next po. Okay. So education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So I this quotation kasi it's my favorite uh quotations na I think yung kailangan may realize natin as students as the youth and also the, the government should also notice this na yung students bilang ka, bilang tayo yung magiging uh, tayo yung magpapatuloy ng ng laban bilang isang isang united na bansa i think they have to provide and they should cater to the um to the clamor natin as students as well thank you all right Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Shari from University of Eastern Philippines. No, uh, thank you for sharing. No, at talagang napakahirap ng nararanasan din ng mga nasa provinces, no, such as UEP. At uh, hopefully, no, uh, we'll be able to help uh, our fellow students there. 
So, ayan na po, natapos na po tayo sa ating mga student representatives, no? And um uh we were able na we were able to hear their side, no? And nakita natin yung sitwasyon, no, across different scenarios. We have from private HEIs, meron tayo from uh two from SUCs, no? One from uh here in NCR and another one sa may uh, province of the University of Eastern Philippines sa may Samar. So ngayon, uh, our next uh, to move on from our to move on in our here in our program uh, our next speaker po ay manggagaling naman sa isang um, uh, government agency na nakikater no sa interest ng mga uh, tertiary education students ang title po ng kanyang talk ay the government subsidy program in the context of learning continuity plan for SUCs for SUC students for a better new normal so uh, at this point, uh, tinatawagan ko po ulit si Professor Arellano to introduce our speaker for today. Hello, uh, Ma'am Flora. Uh, okay, the speaker natin. Hello. Okay, uh, Ma'am Flora, our speaker po is uh, Attorney Ryan uh, Esteves from uh, the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, na siya? Yes po. Uh, na, uh, uh, I've notified okay. na po their, their, their staff. Okay. Uh-huh. Sige na Okay. Uh, we would like to introduce to our um, viewers and our participants this webinar a person whom I know well, but um, I would like to introduce him as the uh, UNIPAS OI Executive Director. Prior to his designation as OIC Executive Director, Attorney Steves served as Undersecretary of the Presidential Legislative Liaison Office in the House of Representatives. Attorney Steves entered government service as a legislative staff of the former Senate President Aquino Nene Pimentel Jr. after passing the bar examination in 2007. When Senator Pimentel's term ended, he worked in the House of Representatives under Pagong Generacion Party List Representative Bernadette Herrera D. He also became the Chief Political Officer of former Senate President Aquino Pimentel the third in 2016. Fred Rodrigo Roa the third appointed Attorney Esteves as Undersecretary of the PLLO on January 6, 2017. As Undersecretary for PLLO, he assisted the PLLO <coughs> Secretary in promoting presidential initiatives and acted as a conduit between the Office of the President and individual members of Congress, non-government organizations, and other cooperative interest groups supportive of the President. He assisted in the drafting of bills and uh, resolutions to ensure that policies and bills are in consonance with the legislative agenda of the president of the administration or the administration. He left the PLLO on June 2, 2020 to join the UNIFAS. Prior to joining the government, he taught music 
mahilig siyang umawit din. Um, he also taught religious education, humanities, and law courses in public and private higher education institutions. He also gave lectures and served as an advisor on mandatory continuing legal education to various civic and non-government organizations. He finished at the Locationist Seminary College, Adamson University, Bachelor of Laws at the University of Santo Tomas, Legazpi, um, uh, Santo Tomas, Legazpi Incorporated, Master of Arts in Religion Education at the Ateneo de Manila University, and Master of Arts in Public Policy at the National Graduate Research Institute for Policy Studies in Tokyo, Japan. Attorney Esteves is also appointed as the Deputy Executive Director of CHED, but is presently dedicating himself as the OIC Executive of UNIFAS Secretariat, which supports the UNIFAS Board in carrying out its functions under Republic Act 10687, otherwise known as the UNIFAS Act, and in implementing student assistance program under RA10931 or the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act. With no further ado, may we call on our friend, the Executive Director of UNIFAS, Attorney Ryan L. Estevez. Hey. Thank you, Mom Flora. I miss you. Miss uh, you too. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Uh, pasensya na po at uh, our apologies because I have this is my fourth meeting for for today. <laughs> uh, this is the new normal, I think. No, uh, I just came from a, a Unifast board meeting and the commission. Uh, committee hearing of the Higher and Technical Education in Congress. And then I have another meeting later on for the director's meeting with Chen. So uh, let me present to you some of our programs that uh, you might be interested, our stakeholders might be interested in terms of uh, the implementation of uh, Republic Act 10931, the UNIFAST uh, law, Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education. May we ask the our staff to please uh, flash my presentation. I promise this will be very brief. Thank you very much. So our 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 uh, presentation uh, will be divided into uh, different uh, parts. Uh, we will next next please. I will introduce who we are. No, yung Unifast po, and then updates on our programs and what are our uh, programs that we wanted to uh, implement in the upcoming uh, months and years. So we are the uh, United uh, Unified Student Financial Assistance System for Tertiary Education or UNIFAST, no? uh, under uh, 10, uh, under previous slide, please. Previous slide. Oops. Pabalik. Okay, so yan po yung uh, batas na nag-govern sa UNIFAS, that's 10, 9, 10, 6, 8, 7, the UNIFAS Law and the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act or the UAQTE, that's the Republic Act 10931. Next. Um, 
this was signed by uh, President Aquino in 2015. And then uh, the second law, the 10931, was signed by the President, uh, uh, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte in what year? Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Ito pong bago is 10931. Ito po yung uh, Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education. So uh, this is uh, an attached agency uh, attached with the Commission on Higher Education and uh, we are mandated to unify and harmonize student granted uh, government funded student financial assistance programs no, and ensure that deserving Filipinos no, uh, students are given equitable access to educational opportunities, especially in higher education. So we have this uh, board members, as you can see in, on, the, on the screen, uh, our chairperson is the chairperson also of the Commission of Higher Education. And we have members of the board from the UST, DepEd, NYC, PASUK, DOLE, COCOPEA, JSIS, TESDA, NEDA, ALCU, and SSS. No? Next. So we are uh, mandated to formulate and approve policies and strategies for UNIFAST no? and review existing policies no? to ensure consistency with the policy framework of our laws and coordinate with the implementing agencies of existing s 2 path So yung mga existing pong mga uh, scholarship grants natin, uh, we are uh, actually, we wanted to uh, unify and uh, make it consistent with the policy framework of uh, 10687 and 10931. Next. These are the, uh, the programs of uh, UNIFAS. No? We have free higher education, uh, basically exempt students in SUCs, no? state universities and colleges, and local universities and colleges that are recognized by CHED from paying from third, uh, tuition and other school fees. So libre na po ang pag-aaral sa state universities and colleges and, and uh, recognized uh, local universities and colleges. Sinasubsidize po ng ating uh, uh, free higher education. Yan. This, is a, this is just a picture of the uh, signing of the Memorandum of Agreement in 2018. Next. So... Uh, this is basically the qualifications for students to, quali uh, to avail of the free higher education. Dapat po Filipino citizen ka, of course, enrolled in SUC and CHED recognized LUCs. Tapos, uh, dapat uh, you meet the admission and retention policies of the institution. Ibig sabihin po, uh, dapat uh, hindi po kayo nakikick out o hindi po kayo uh, uh, na, na lahat po ay... Uh, Wala po, tayong, uh, wala po tayong age requirement or financial requirements as long as you are enrolled in the, uh, in the state universities and colleges, pwede ka pong maka-avail ng free higher education. And then, of course, this is for uh, undergraduate programs. So, dapat po, wala kang, no, wala kang previous undergraduate degree. So, if you are a second courser, hindi po pwede. No? So, dapat po... Uh, you are a first uh, undergraduate or post-secondary undergraduate degree. And then you are not overstaying in the program. For example, if you have four years, no, for example, in accountancy, kung four years po yung, yung, um, yung program, meron po tayong isang grace, one-year grace period. Or for example, if, if the course is in engineering na may five years, five years plus one grace period. Uh, if you lumampas po tayo sa 4, four plus 1, 5 plus 1 grace, uh, grace period na yan, so nag-overstay na tayo, hindi na po tayo covered ng free higher education. Next. Next. So these are the benefits that we give to uh, uh, the students of uh, free higher education. No? Uh, tuition fees and other uh, 13 school other fees. Pakita nga natin, please. Previous slide. Yan. So, my admission fees, athletics fees, computer fees, cultural, etc. Yan po yung binabayaran natin under our laws no? uh, on, on free higher education. Okay, next. Then we also have the tertiary education subsidy. Uh, isa rin po ito sa uh, programa 
under UNIFAS that supports or subsidizes uh, to support at least a partial cost of, of tertiary education, no, inclusive of our education-related uh, expenses. So specifically, access to quality tertiary education in city or town without, ito po, yung mga wala pong state uh, universities or local colleges or local universities. So we, we give them also TES, no, yung tertiary education subsidy. Next. Ano po ang, ang uh, requirements, qualifications? Halos the same lang po. No? And uh, isa lang po dito ang ano natin, ang dinagdag natin no? according to the law. It should be subject to prioritization and availability of funds. So lahat po ng ating mga applicants are subject to prioritization and availability of funds. Okay. Next. For the benefits that we give to... Uh, through the tertiary education subsidy, for SUCs and LUCs, uh, libre na po ang kanilang tuition and other school fees. And then we also give tests, yung other test uh, education related expenses. That's 40,000 per academic year for those who are qualified. And if you are a person with disability, meron pa po kayong 30,000 in addition no, per academic year. And then if you are taking the licensure exam, no, kunyari, fourth year or fifth year na kayo, may licensure exam kayo, meron pa pong 10,000 one-time maximum uh, reimbursement for the licensure exam. For private uh, schools or private HEIs, we give a total of almost uh, uh, 20 for academic year and then uh, for other related expenses, we have 40,000 per academic year and then again, if you are a a uh, PWD persons with disability, another 30,000 per academic year. And then for licensure exam, the same thing po with SUCs and LUCs. So you, we give a uh, 10,000 maximum uh, re reimbursement. So if you will see private HCIs, uh, if you are on the last part, siguro lahat graduating ka na, magtitake ka na ng, ng licensure exam mo, and you are a test uh, grantee, you will be receiving a total of almost 100,000 pesos per academic year. Next. Next. Okay, so this is how we do the press cut at uh, prioritization of the test. No? Uh, inuuna po natin yung mga continuing. So pag kayo po ay naging uh, test grantee na, Hanggang makatapos po kayo no, ng inyong course, continuing grantees na po kayo. And then uh, another one yung on the third level would be students residing in, uh, and studying in private HEIs na walang SUK or LUK. And then those that have, uh, nawala, those that are in the listahanan. What happened? Sorry, na wala yung aking slides. There seems to have a technical difficulty. Shane, please uh, pakilagay ulit yung ating slide. Attorney, may kopya ba ba? May kopya ang inip? Uh, I will check. Uh... Para ma-assist kayo. Resi, please send it to Baka na wala internet. So, uh, habang... Ayan. So, uh, ayan. So, okay, nakabalik na po yata yung Baka PowerPoint. Baka na po uh, yeah. Yes. Ito na po. Nakikita ko na po na gilin. So, so, 
extension ko na uh, ganyan po talaga this uh, uh, very challenging yung ating uh, interconnection. Yes, oo nga eh. Okay, so this yeah. is uh, doon tayo sa previous slide that uh, uh, Shane, please. Okay, and then uh, next, next, please. Okay, so ito po yung test prioritization category natin. Uh, wala, po, wala po ditong uh, human intervention at because these are actually co uh, automated na po yung uh, system natin. So ginagamit po natin uh, yung system natin. Meron po tayong test portal. So automated po yung system natin. So hindi po tayo, uh, this is, we have less, uh, less uh, human intervention on this other than the the endorsement of the listahan ng 2.0 from DSWD. Okay, next. Uh, these are the documentary requirements na napapanahon ngayon, lalo-lalo na magbubukas ang, ang klase. So, if you want to apply, you have to give these documentary requirements. COR, assessment of fees, photocopy of PWID for those that are PWD, and for those uh, enrolled in in uh, private schools with no uh, state universities and colleges, yung certificate of residency. Next. Ito lang po ay pictures ng mga nationwide test distribution natin. Pinapakita lang po namin dito na even during the time of the pandemic, dire-diretso po ang serbisyo ng Unifast CHED. No? At uh, tayo po ay uh, nagbibigay pa rin ng continuously nagbibigay ng uh, tulong sa ating mga uh, estudyante. No? And then another, another uh, program that we have is the student loan program. This is a short and long-term uh, loan to support tertiary education, including uh, medicine and law and other graduate programs. So pag student loan program, pwede na po dito yung medicine, law, and other graduate programs. Ito po ay i-roll out pa lang namin bago pa lang po itong uh, programa ng Unifast, CHED. No? So uh, I, I know there will be a lot of uh, people who will be interested with this. Next. Okay. This is the MOA uh, signed between DBP and uh, CHED where we gave $1 billion in funds for the student loan program to DBP para po sa student loan program short term natin. Next. Qualifications, if you wanted to apply for a student loan program, dapat undergraduate student ka or graduate student ka, Filipino, enrolled in SUCs and CHED recognized LUCs, and assured, uh, quality assured private HEIs. No, dapat nasa registry ng CHED ang school ninyo. And then you should be uh, enrolled in a program that is in the CHED registry also. So you can check with the school if the program that you are enrolled with is, uh, kumbaga meron tayong tinatawag na Certificate of Program Compliance or yung COPC. So for the student loan program, we give a maximum of 60000 every program cycle. And this, is, this has no interest no? if paid within the loan term, which is actually one year. So wala po siyang interest. 0% interest. Parang ano to, credit card na 0% interest. No? Next. These are the documentary requirements. No? Okay. Form, income tax uh, of the applicant and the family, school ID, government issued uh, ID of the co-maker and the picture of the applicant and the co-maker. Yan po yung documentary requirements natin. Next. Ito pong free hire, free, hire, uh, free technical vocation education and training natin ay uh, ini-implement na po ito ng TESDA. But although this is uh, the mandate under the UNIFAST, no, Universal Access to uh, Quality Tertiary Education, but uh, this is basically uh, implemented by TESDA na. So this is an exemption uh, from paying fees in state-run technical vocational institutions or TVIs. Okay. Next. Next, please. So for the 
free tech book, ito po yung nabigay natin, 3.9 billion in 2018, uh, 101,124 beneficiaries. For uh, fiscal year 2019, 2.9 billion with 67,122 beneficiaries. Next. Ito po yung qualifications. Uh, learners po in their post-secondary TESA registered uh, TVET programs. And learners, na dapat in, wala pa po kayong NC3 or higher except those enrolled in bundled programs. And of course, subject to prioritization and availability of funds. Kasi limitado lamang po yung pondo na binibigay sa atin ng gobyerno. So uh, subject to prioritization pa rin po tayo. Next. Benefits, yan po yung benefits, no? Bayad sa tuition and other uh, fees, no? Ng trainee. Next. For the updates on the programs of uh, Unifast, no? Siguro pakita natin. Next. Next slide. Okay. Yan po yung budget natin na, na binigay ng gobyerno sa atin. And, uh, uh, This is actually being, uh, nagsimula po tayo ng 2017 with the 8 million budget. Tapos ngayong 2020, umabot po tayo sa 28.4 uh, billion pesos. No? Next. Next. Okay, for 2019, ito po yung breakdown ng ating uh, programs. No? Free higher ed. Nakita nyo po, malaki po yung uh, binibigay natin for TES. That's 25.5 billion pesos. Okay. Next. Next, please. Okay, next. For 2021, uh, medyo malaki-laki po rin po yung budget na binigay sa atin. Uh, that's 44 point, uh, I think 44.2 billion Uh, this is uh, ito yung achievements ng uh, Unifast no yung for free higher education for the academic year 2018-2019 nakapagbigay tayo ng uh, for 1.18 million students na libreng tuition and other school fees for 2019-2020 uh, sa 16 billion budget uh, 1.33 million for the first sem and 1.24 million students for the second sem Next. Next, please. For TES, uh, last year, meron tayo nabigyan na... Previous slide, please. Previous slide. Yes, uh, for, for last year, Nabigyan natin ng uh, 288,739 students yung ating TES. Next slide, please. For the academic year 2019-2020, ito po yung ating uh, nabigyan. No? 412,488 students for first sem and 384,645 students for the second set. Plus yung 147,512 tunong-duno program beneficiaries na nasa Unifast na rin po. Next. Siguro next na tayo. Next. Yan. So uh, we actually have this in our website, no? Kung, kung makikita nyo po, uh, meron po tayong, if you want, uh, you can visit our website, uh, unifast.gov.ph uh, uh, at nandoon po yung uh, papano po tayo mag-apply. No? So pagpasok po natin uh, sa Unifast no, noong June, in-improve po natin yung ating uh, website at pinakita po natin doon through, kasi nakita namin medyo mahirap uh, pag binasa mo sa isang papel eh. So what we did with the team is we come up with infographics so you can see this in the website po natin. So for those interested, you can actually go to the website. No? Next. 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 As for, 
For uh, student loan programs, uh, meron ng mga nag-apply, although uh, konti pa lang. So we invite uh, our students to apply for the student loan programs. No? Uh, ang total po niyan ay nasa 1,000 plus pa lang po next, on the next slide. No? On the next slide, so, so 1,116, pero ang nag-qualify lang po ay 627. So we... we, we we would ask our friends, our students to apply for this uh, student loan program for tertiary education. Next. So moving forward, uh, ito po yung aming mga plans. So we wanted to push for the inclusion ng indigenous peoples and then persons with disability and dependence of rebel attorneys sa listahan ng 3.0. Kasi po yung listahan ng 2.0 natin, I think that was 2015 pa ata. So... But they are coming up with the listahan ng 3.0, no, yung DSWD, kaya lang po medyo nahito because of the pandemic. So we are pushing na maisama po yung mga IPs natin, yung mga persons with disability independence of rebel returnees in the listahan ng 3.0 so that they will automatically be uh, beneficiaries of the programs no, of uh, UNIFAST. Next. Uh, ito po yung napag-usapan namin recently in the board. No? Uh, we, will, uh, we will also help uh, those that uh, repatriated, um, repatriated, displaced, and deceased overseas Filipino workers. No? At least isa po sa mga dependents nila. We will also give a one-time uh, grant of 30,000 pesos no? for this academic year lamang po. Next. This is also in, in, re, in response to the, to the exhortation of the president to help the OFWs. No? Okay, next. So, yan lamang po ang programa ng, uh, ng UNIFAS. I, I encourage our friends, our students to visit our channels, our Facebook page, our website if you have questions. As you can see, we, we will endeavor to make our website more uh, kumbaga, uh, hyperactive, tapos uh, interactive din para sa ating mga sudyante. No? Siguro, ito rin yung challenge sa akin, Ma'am Flora, because di ba, uh, pag bata talaga, no? dapat uh, bata kasi din yung ating mga kliyente dito, yung ating stakeholders for the, the free higher education. So, we wanted to make innovation. So, with the help of our friends, stakeholders, uh, sana po magawa po namin ito in the, in the succeeding months. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Ma'am Flora and uh, Ines. Maraming salamat po. Attorney. Yes, opo. May mga ilang tanong lang sila. Yes, ma'am. Yes, saka mag, magpo-photo ops tayo after, ha? Yes, opo. Opo. Yes, po. And thank you po. Thank you po, Ma'am Flor. And uh, thank you rin po, uh, Ornith, no, for uh, presenting to us the UNIFAS program. And uh, we're very hopeful din po no, na this could be of help yung pandemic mga students. And uh, ngayon po, uh, at Ornith, uh, meron po tayo mga student leaders ngayon no, na, uh, who have some questions po sa inyo. And uh, we're going to call them po uh, one by one no, from different schools no, for them to uh, question. And then po dun sa iba na nasa Zoom parties, you can uh, send your other chat box then we'll recognize you after po masagot ni attorney yung uh, mga partners in this event. So, ngayon ko po muna uh, from the University of the East si Sir Gino Unmute Pwede ka po mag-unmute Yes, sir, Gino. Hello. Yeah. Hello, po. Ayan. Hello. Hello, po. Ayan. Uh, ako po si Gino Tupas po from UM Manila. Um, tanong ko lang po sa kay ano kay Yusek Astabes po kung tama po ba na ipas, ipasa po sa mga estudyante yung mga yung Meralco contract or other other fees po na hindi na utilize Come again? Come again, uh, sir? Meralco? Meralco contract po. 
ng school. Meral. Um, Bakit okay, electricity ma- fees? O electrical fees? Opo, electrical fees po. Ah, uh, uh, Saan po yan? Uh, private schools or uh, public? Uh, private, school, private school po, sir. Sa UE po. Ah, sa private schools. Actually, sa private schools kasi, they have the the ang private schools po merong uh, freedom to to uh, collect fees no meron po silang freedom to collect fees but of course uh, this is subject to the approval no kung magi-increase po sila sa ched pa rin no so let us uh, check na lang kung ito pong uh, fees na ito ay may approval no from ched oh, sige thank you po All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Gino. Next naman po, attorney, ay from the Holy Angel University, si Ms. Clarice. Uh, Hello po. Hello po. Good afternoon po. Hello po. Okay po, my question po is, um, ano po yung steps na pwede namin gawin as council para ma-address po ng maayos yung appeal namin sa transparency regarding laboratory fees? Um, kasi nga po, hindi naman po kami pupunta ng school to uh, utilize the laboratory. Yet, yung laboratory fees po, uh, pareho pa rin tulad ng sa face-to-face. Uh, yes. Uh, siguro if I may answer, no? Ito po yung pinag-uusapan na rin ng, uh, ng commission, no? ng uh, uh, commission on higher education kung paano ma-utilize yung, uh, yung mga fees na na hindi na natin magagamit ngayon. So let us wait for the official uh, memorandum from the Commission on Higher Education. No, I think uh, nung Tuesday pa lang namin ito napag-usapan. So we will, uh, we will wait for, we have to wait for the official uh, communication or memorandum from the Commission and Bank on this. Meron na po, napag-usapan na po yan, uh, Ms. Kla. Thank you so much po. Yeah. Ms. Clarice, uh, attorney, pwede ko pong ano, uh, i-reiterate yung tanong kanina ni uh, ni Sir Gino yung regarding the uh, fee na UE no, na uh, tam- will not be alright daw po na uh, yung sa, sa electricity fees po like sa Meralco ay isama sa magiging bayarin ng mga students ng UE. Uh, like, like what I've said kanina, at uh, kasama naman talaga yan no when for especially for public eh, for private school kasama yan sa kanilang miscellaneous fees no so uh, ang ang inaano lang natin uh, ang because this is UE this is actually a uh, a private school ang University of the East right so uh, yeah. depende po yan sa board if they will approve the the charging no or the increase siguro Baka ang, ang gusto sabihin dito ni Gino, baka nag-increase yung kanilang uh, electric. Yes po. Oo. Actually po, naniningil na po sila. Kasama na po sa binayaran naming tuition yung electricity bills. Ah, okay. So, first and foremost kasi, ang ang uh, ang fees na yan ay uh, ina-approve ng uh, ng uh, what's this? Ng, ng board, no? Yes, uh, I have the information that UE is autonomous, no? But they can write letters to the school board to this. Okay. Ah, okay, autonomous pala ang UE. So ang ang UE is autonomous. So uh, they have the 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 was this the the freedom to to collect, no? So siguro i-clear i-clear natin ito sa UE, no? Kung kung bakit nila uh, bakit nila bakit sila nagko-collect or nag-increase ng collection on this? Thank you po sir. Okay. Ayun. Sige. Thank you po. Uh, siguro ano lang ano uh, habol lang din po doon sir no doon sa tanong ni UE. Uh, hindi daw po ba dapat may intervention from uh, CHED regarding this uh, matter? Uh, siguro follow up lang din po. Dapat merong consultation 'yan. Uh, sa stakeholders no it's it, it is uh, incumbent upon the the school the, the private HEI to have stakeholders uh, consultation no para sa pag-increase ng ating ano uh, ng ating uh, mga fees na binabayaran ng ating mga estudyante 
So tingnan niyo okay. kung may may consultation na nangyari, no? Okay. Thank you po, sir. Ah, uh, next po ay mula naman sa uh, what school is this? From University of Eastern Philippines, yung nag-present po kanina, ang uh, student regent po nila si uh, Miss uh, Shari. Hello. Hello po, good afternoon. Um i-ask ko lang po, ano po yung pwedeng i, I uh, ano po pwedeng nagawin ng SUCs and private HEIs para uh, they can after the mental health of our students because of the is in cases of depression during the pandemic. Ano ang pwedeng gawin ng SUCs and HEIs na pwedeng i-mandate to look after the mental health of the students because of the increased uh, case depression during the pandemic. Okay, I think uh, I, I may not, Ma'am Flora, I may not be in, in the position to answer this, no. but, but I guess this is a uh, guidance services ng schools talaga ito, no, Ma'am Flora? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Siguro, magkaroon din ng um, uh, consultation with the guidance. Yeah. And then if the guidance uh, office cannot resolve, issues like depression probably they can the guidance can refer the case to a medical practitioner kasi kung ang depression is already a mental uh, uh ang cause ay mental um, uh, illness baka kailangan na ng intervention ng psychiatrist or medical practitioner pero Tama. dapat school among um, um, SUV Flora is teaching psychology. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, siguro yan yung uh, alamin natin sa mga schools natin lalo na sa LUCs or SUCs or even in private uh, higher institutions that they have a functional um, medical clinic and at the same time guidance center kasi magkaiba yung function ng medical sa guidance sa guidance more on counseling uh, case management pero it, kapag hindi na kaya ng guidance dito na pumapasok yung referral system natin at kung hindi kaya din ng ating medical clinics sa SUCs that's the time that we refer it to uh, other levels of medical offices. So, for example, PGH or any government hospital. Tama ba yun? Okay. That's part of Thank the student offices, ma'am, di ba? Of the school. Uh, I think that's part of the okay. student services and school. And then, actually, binabayaran nyo yan. So, you have the right to to, to demand from uh, schools that uh, magkaroon ng uh, intervention on, on this aspect. Yan. So, thank you po. Uh, thank you, uh, kay Regent from University of Eastern Philippines. Next naman po ay from uh, PNU, si Miss Julian Rafael. Hello po. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Uh, mali na po ba yung dating ng audio? Yes, yes. Okay po. Question po. Um, mula po sa mga datos na binanggit, mula pa lang po kay Senator Villanueva, Hanggang sa mga speakers, kitang kita po natin ang boses at kalagayan ng mga estudyante sa iba't ibang bahagi ng bansa patungkol sa kandaan para sa darating na pasukan. Nariyan ang problema ng pinansyal at lokasyon sa mabay po ang pagkakaroon ng online class. Um, sir, tanong lang po, paano po natin masisigurado ang kalidad ng edukasyon sa mga probinsya at dibdib na lugar gaya ng mga nanginirahan sa mga isla kahit na modular ang pinili nilang pamamaraan? Meron po bang mga, meron po bang konkretong plano sa kanila para mag, para magabayan at matuto pa rin sila sa gitna ng pandemya bukod sa pagmimigay ng bojos? Yun po, yun po yung tanong ko po. Okay, uh, Miss Julie, no? Time and again, uh, time and again ang ang emphasis na sinasabi ng uh, ng Chad is uh, hindi po siya online lang talaga but actually flexible learning. 
No, it can be a combination of a uh, module online or a limited face to face. No, for those that are, uh, pwede naman mag uh, face to face. No, so it's actually not online lang. It's flexible learning. So uh, yes, we we know the flight of the students right now because of this uh, pandemic and na nangyare. Uh, but uh, again, isa sa mga exhortation ng CHED is to assess, no? Muna ng school. Uh, kaya nga no, naglabas ang, ang ating presidente for, for local, uh, for, for elementary or, or high school education na i-minub siya sa October. Uh, yung tinan basic na tanong din is for college students, no? Kailan ba dapat magsimula, no? So ang, ang statement ng ating chairperson is let's assess no sinabihan niya na you the, stu, the school should assess as to their um, uh, readiness ready ba yung school no to to open their their classes so nagiging flexible po tayo no so uh, some of them that are ready are already opening their classes but some of them that are not yet ready inurong po nila yung kanilang opening of classes as 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 far as uh, September to October. So depende po sa school talaga kung kapano po yung kanilang readiness. Okay po. Maraming salamat po. Salamat. Yeah. Maraming salamat din uh, Julie. Okay. Uh, siguro remind ko lang yung last na mga questions natin ano na uh, since we are talking, we are focused on the UNIFAS, we are primarily concerned sa financial assistance to the students, no? as indicated sa presentation ni attorney. And uh, last three questions na lang po ito, attorney, and they're coming from, ano, no? from uh, one system. So siguro po, para medyo mabilis tayo, tawagin ko po muna sila isa-isa for them to raise their uh, questions. No? Then isa na lang pong isasagot ni attorney Steven. So tawagin ko po from uh, PUP... Uh, Alfonso, si Mr. Nathan, so you can give your question. Hello? Hello, uh, Nathan? Hello po, naririnig po? Yes, rinig ka po. Ayan. So magandang hapon po. Um, tanong ko lang po yung sa about sa Unifast Shed na financial assistance kung uh, limited lang po ba yung slots neto sa mga universities o uh, sa mga state universities and colleges po. Kasi po um, parang itong mga nakaraang taon um, sa university po namin ay Um, parang limited lang po yung slots na binigay sa mga estudyante kung sino po yung makakapag-apply doon po sa scholarship program or financial assistance. Kaya yung iba po mga estudyante na uh, pasok din po doon sa qualifications para mag-apply po ay yung iba hindi na po sila umabot kasi po parang limited po yung slots. Yun lang po. Okay. Thank you, uh, Nathan. Next naman from uh, PUP Santo Tomas Batangas uh, si Anthony Alka please state your question Hello Hello pa ka? Yes, So po. magandang hapon Ang katanungan ko lang po ay what can we possibly do to practical based courses most especially those that requires physical contact Like uh, sa engineering or those who need for laboratories, um, may reassessment po ba or revisit ng current curriculum? Or meron po ba silang ginawang uh, pag adjust Kasi it's, it needs physical contact po and we're on online classes po. Yun lang po. Okay. And then, uh, huli naman si Miss Eleanor Bartolome, uh, student regent ng PUP. May question ka po. Hello, attorney. Actually, I have two questions. One is regarding sa scholarship. Second is regarding for budget. First, there are 424 CSMP grantees whose scholarship are in danger of being revoked 
due to the past all or mass promotion policy implemented in their respective higher educational institutions in which this policy is in, is the most humane response and due to the inefficacy and inaccessibility of online classes on top of the numerous concerns from the previous semester when the lockdown was imposed. Now, the question is, what is the concrete plan of CHED Unifas with regards to these grantees so that they will still be included and retained under the scholar scholarship program? Because uh, Ateneo Dinaga University and the Saldasma already clarified that they did not implement an all-pass policy. Instead, they have a separate and unique grading system. However, meron pa rin mga schools na nagpasa ng mass promotion policies. Ang nangyayari po ngayon na ipinasa, ipinapasa ang estudyante ang burden at naiipit yung estudyante due to the non-numerical grades given to them. Ano lang po yung possible intervention na maaaring gawin ni CHED Unifas para po makasama pa rin yung mga grantees na ito. Second, with regards to the budget, maaari po bang i-channel for flexi learning like field trip and tours na budgets ng iba't ibang universities na mo-convert and re-channel to the printing of modules, gadgets, or internet allowance of students to cope up with the flexible learning. Yan lang po. Thank you. All right, thank you po. So, attorney, you may respond na po sa kanilang question. Okay, let me respond do sa pinakadulo muna no kasi para pabalik tayo no. Uh, in terms of the pass all uh, uh, yung yung nilabas ng che, ng ng uh, CHED na na PR no uh, na ma-endanger yung mga bata na yung mga estudyante ng scholarship nila. Actually, uh, hindi masyadong concern siya ng ano ng Unifast because sa Unifast kasi we're we're talking about grants no ito pong scholarship are actually for for shed ito ito yung tinatawag nating merit scholarship kasi nga naman how do you actually uh, uh, substantiate or ano bang evidence ng estudyante that uh, you maintain the the general weighted average no paano iko-compute pag walang pag walang grade no kung walang numerical grade but for Unifast, uh, hindi siya masyadong uh, uh, concerned because uh, ang requirement lang for Unifast is that hindi dapat siya matanggal sa 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 ano niya, sa sa program niya. So if pass yan, so you you are still uh, included as a test or or beneficiary ng free higher education. Siguro magkakaproblema ka talaga dito doon sa mga uh, CHED merit scholarship, no? CHED merit scholarship yan. So pinapa-review na po natin 'yan, okay? So for rechanneling of budget uh, right now uh, pinag-uusapan pa rin po namin 'yan no uh, and uh, the Unifast board and CHED uh, will come up with a statement at inaaral po natin on how we can actually uh, uh, cope up with the changing times kasi nga tama tama kayo na nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa sa sitwasyon natin uh, nagkaroon na ng pandemya may mga may mga items on the on the was this on on our tuition uh, miscellaneous fees na hindi magagamit because uh, wala nga for example lang face to face and all that walang field trips athletic fees so we will come up with a statement based sa aming pag-aaral no at tinitingnan namin yung batas syempre kailangan natin tingnan yung batas na na nagugovern sa Unifas and Shed no kung pwede nating gawin ito but uh, we will uh, soon uh, release a statement through Shed no uh, if we can uh, use this uh, this funds no uh, this uh, other fees no para magamit sa iba for example for flexible learning uh, modalities no like online uh, online and uh, yung flexible learning activities natin for for the students, no? Yung curriculum adjustment for SUCs, that is basically a chat concern, no? Hindi siya actually a unifast concern. But uh, yung, yung curriculum concern is, uh, I think you have to wait for the school, kung ano yung kanilang, uh, how they will, they will actually implement their curriculum uh, based on... Uh, considering the situation that we have no uh, may pandemia for example yung mga OJT paano kayo mag-OJT so 
uh, titingnan niya ng ano ng ng school kung paano nila masusolusyunan yung problema ng ganito. Okay, for slot uh, sa limited assistance doon sa PUP no. Uh, sabi ng ating uh, representative from PUP, I think Alfonso Bayon, Alfonso na uh, yung konti ka konti yung slots ng uh, ng uh, beneficiaries natin sa PUP. Uh, sa totoo lang po, uh, isa po sa pinakamalaking binabayaran ng ng Unifas ay PUP because you have more than 70,000 students, no? Uh, yan po ay libreng uh, free uh, free tuition and other school fees po. So siguro po yung sinasabi ni ni Ma'am kanina, siguro ito yung ano, yung slots doon sa Chad Merit Scholarship and other scholarship grants na binibigay ng other agencies. But as far as uh, uh, Unifas is concerned, lahat po ay covered ng ano lahat po yan wala po kayong binabayaran sa PUP no yan po ay binabayaran ng ng uh, dito sa programa ng Unifast no na binigay sa atin ng gobyerno Okay uh, thank you po Okay then attorney meron pa pong ano no uh, if, you, if you, okay lang po may dalawa lang, may dalawa humabol lang po na question uh, the the next question po ay uh, uh, ito binabasa ko po Uh, regarding uh, private HEIs daw po, how can we intervene to private HEIs to revisit their system of collection of fees? Will it be possible to release a memorandum from CHED to remove fees that do not reflect the needs of the students, i.e. laboratory fees and so on, and reassess what's really the needed ones like modules and online essentials? So yun po yung first na follow-up. Ay, sorry, sorry. Come again. Ay, ay sorry po. Ayan. So, uh, ang question po ay, how can we intervene to uh, private HEIs to revisit their system of collection of fees? Will it be possible to release a memo from CHED to remove fees that do not reflect the needs of the students, such as laboratory fees, and to end reassess what, what fees really are the needed ones, like modules and uh, online essentials? Siguro uh, maganda siguro sumulat tayo sa sa Commission on Higher Education no to ask for uh, uh was this akong uh, gusto niyo talaga mag-intervene no para sa for clarification no on this on this matter no because okay, okay, these private higher educational institutions no private yan so so right. uh, limited yung aming maiisasagot for example sa Unifas limited ang maiisasagot ko diyan Okay other than uh, uh, you're recommending to the students no student bodies to write a uh, chat or to the schools no on this matter. All right. Thank you po. And now for the last follow up po pinaabot po from PUP ulit. Uh, what would be your considerations po whether or not to accept an application given the current situation? Will it be purely online transactions or we need to go to certain offices pa po? So, so she probably pertaining sa transactions po sa ating uh, universities ano. Yun po. Ah, okay. So as I've said itong itong uh, itong application natin for itong free higher education ay ano na yan, automatic na yan. So lahat ng estudyante sa state universities and colleges libre na po yan. So hindi na kailangan mag-apply. For the TES yung tertiary education subsidy, ah uh, yan po ay in-apply through the school. So meron tayong mga focal persons to the school at yan po ay online na rin. No? Online din po yan. So makipag-coordinate tayo sa focal persons ng uh, ng school no kung uh, how they can actually uh, apply for the for the test no. And also for the student loan program, ganun din po online din po yan. So no need to go to the schools no actually to to submit application. You just call Uh, siguro mga student services ata ito eh no parang sa student services ito ng school usually nakalad yung mga focal persons natin for the programs of Unifast and said yan ayun thank you so much po attorney and uh, thank you din po no sa lahat ng nagpaabot ng questions yeah. no sa nag take ng opportunity if i may add uh, Aubrey yes. no Talaga yes, ano, dapat hindi talaga muna lumabas ang mga estudyante lalong lalo na kung yes. kailangan because you know we have a uh, dumadami ang cases natin ng COVID no so 
uh, we, we would like to exhort everyone at least no to if you can like this no kung pwede namang uh, virtual ang meetings hindi kailangan lumabas no uh, this would be uh, this would not only help your family but this also help our government address kasi burden sam na sobrang laki na ng burden ng uh, nitong covid na ito pandemic na ito sa ekonomiya natin sa sa mental health natin financial health natin at sa at grabe 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 ano nito grabe ang epekto nito sa atin so thank you thank you yes yes noted po thank you so thank you po attorney Estevez. and sa lahat po nagtanong uh, thank you so much po no for uh, sending your questions to us and uh, kagaya po na sabi namin kanina uh, If you have other questions pa po, uh, the Inet Philippines is uh, is willing to ano, no, uh, send your questions to Ched and all your other uh, inquiries pa regarding sa ating uh, uh, better normal. And then uh, at this point po, uh, Tony, mayroon lang po tayong uh, ipapresent sa inyong uh, certificate uh, sa inyong uh, pag, uh, pagpa-unlock sa ating program ngayon. Baka pwedeng i-flash natin. Ayan. So I'll just read po the citation. Uh, certif- uh, Inet Philippines awards this Certificate of Recognition to Attorney Ryan L. Estevez, OIC Executive Director of the Unified Financial System for Tertiary Education in gratefulness and appreciation of his distinguished public service and insightful contribution in making public tertiary education and educational education accessible to everyone through the provision of scholarship through the Unified program as a resource speaker given this 28th of August 2020 on the Philippines. Ayan. So thank you so much po attorney Ryan, no? Ah, uh, medyo kakaiba no virtual ang ating yeah, uh, giving a certificate. Salamat. I would love to yeah. meet everyone. Sana kung kung po pwede, 'di ba? Mas masaya sana if if we can gather Ma'am Flora, 'di ba? Mas masaya na. Kilala ko ni Ma'am Flora eh. Yes. To we used to ako kasi uh, uh, if I may share also no uh, we were together with Ma'am Flora no kasi ako po ay bago po ako maging isang abogado ako po isang teacher. So very good yeah. talaga sa akin ang ang advocacy ng edukasyon. So I think uh, uh, the, the, uh, this advocacy and this work is really meant for me Ma'am Flora. So oh. masaya, masaya din ako kahit uh, ganitong pagkakataon at sitwasyon na meron tayo but you know uh, let us know if if, if how can we of help no and how we can uh, better our services no partner sa kasi, yeah sa kasi attorney siya ang lawyer namin sa union <laughs> sa PUP union faculty union <laughs> Ma'am, yes. pro bono ha? Pro bono ha? Pro bono. Ayan, <laughs> pro bono. Ayan. 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 Thank you so much po, Tony. At uh, this point po, no, uh, baka pwede maka-request po tayo ng uh, sa, inyo, sa inyo po, sir. Yes. Uh, request ko lahat na uh, mag-on po ng kanilang mirror para meron po tayo po to, Tony. And sa lahat po ng mga guests natin from uh, Ma'am Flor, ano kami ha? Uh, full force kami ha? Kahit ra- marathon ng aming mga meetings. Inform mo kami, attorney, inform mm-hmm. kami kapag may mga meetings ang um, Jed. Yeah. Sa, uh, sa House o kaya sa Senate. Yeah. Sige ma'am. At sama mo kami sa directory, ang init. Ha? Ang aming mga staff, oh, punong-puno kami. You, si Fresi, si Ma'am Violi, si Mel G, okay. si Shane, Uh, si Clara, I think, uh, punong-puno kami dito. <laughs> yung aming, si Mitzi, si Andrew. So, uh, I would like to thank them also for supporting me. Kahit, uh, si Mama Del and Annalisa, no? mga heads ng aming mga divisions. So, full force po kami para sa inyong event. Maraming, Maraming salamat. salamat po. Attorney, thank you very much. Eh. <laughs> Yan. Hello po, picture ah. po tayo. Um, sige po. Dalawang frame po tayo. Okay. Picture ko na po tong first frame. Okay. Uh, one, two, three. Smile po. Okay, thank you. Then next frame naman po. Um, wait lang po ah. Okay. One, two, three. Smile po. 
Thank you. Okay na po. Ma'am, padala mo yung certificate, ha? Yes, padala ko sa ano mo. Sa, pati yung proceedings ng, ano, ng ating webinar. Thank you po. Thank you po. Para record din ng office. Salamat. Miss you. Miss you. <laughs> Ayan. So, thank you po. No? So, thank you po, Attorney Esteves and uh, sa lahat po ng mga nagpanong ngayon. We've had a very fruitful discussion. And uh, wag po na tayo aalis. No? Um, we're near the end of our program. So, we will now go to uh, the synthesis of all our discussions for this webinar. And uh, to discuss to discuss this uh, synthesis, no, yung paglalagom ng ating mga discussion points, I would like to call on the, again, the student regent of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Ms. Eleanor Joyce Bartolome. Thank you, Aubrey. Una sa lahat po, nagpapasalamat po kami sa lahat ng nakilahok sa discussion at nagstay hanggang dulo dahil alam po natin na mahirap yung mga connection ngayon. Nakakatuwa po na makita na nagsama-sama ang iba't ibang estudyante mula sa iba't ibang eskwelahan at may inisyatiba ang mga civil society networks para magkaroon ng avenue at platform ang mga estudyante upang ipaabot ang natatanging kondisyon na kinakaharap ng kanilang mga universidad. At isa po ito sa mga hakbang upang matiyak natin na ang mga polisiya na ibibigay sa atin at i-implement ang siyang sasagot sa lahat ng suliraning binabanggit natin kanina. Natunghayan natin na sa panahon ng pandemya, walang iisang modelo ng polisiya ang aangkop sa lahat ng bansa. But the most efficient and effective way in implementing a policy is to have an active participation from the people through the intervention and engagement in the process of crafting a policy. Nakita po natin, nandyan ang mga nag-trending na estudyante at guro na pumupunta sa iba't ibang mga lugar, umaakyat ng bundok, nagsiset up ng kanilang mga gadgets for adaptation sa labas ng kanilang bahay. Kabikabila din ang mga donation drives upang magkaroon ng gadgets for adaptation ng mga estudyante. Pero sana, huwag natin kalimutan na hindi lamang ito usapin ng resiliency ng ating pagkapilipino. Totoo na tayo ay, may mat tayo ay matatag at handang humarap sa laban para sa ating kinabukasan. Pero ito po ang tunay na buhay. Refleksyon ng hindi agaran at hindi sa, lapat sa lupang solusyon na ibinibigay sa atin. At sa kabila ng efforts ng mga estudyante at kaguroan na magkaroon ng continuous learning process, litaw na hindi sumasapat ang inihahain na solusyon ng nasyonal na pamahalaan upang agaran na maaksyonan ang mga iba pang nakaambang suliranin para sa taon ng panuroang 2020 2021. In this webinar, it highlighted the plight of every students amidst the time of the pandemic. Because whether we like it or not, ito na po ang new normal na kailangan nating harapin at batbatin. At dahil walang iisang modelo upang tugunan ang iba't ibang suliranin ng mga institusyon, muli kong inirehistro na ito ang kahalagahan ng intervention ng buong stakeholders sa pag-craft ng isang policy. And if I may summarize and also add points to the discussion, I'll highlight the four major points critically discussed in this webinar. And that is the technical, economical, practical, and financial approach in order for us to make a tertiary education a strong and unbreakable foundation in building and establishing a better normal in schools and universities. First, In the technical approach, it is not an alienable fact to all of us that the problem of the new normal academic condition is not only limited to the burden of the higher education institutions, but lies on the coherence of policy and coordination together with all of the national government agencies. Kasi kabit ni po nito, minsan walang mga connection kaya hindi nakakapag-participate ang mga estudyante sa online class. Thus, we should establish a coordination with the national telecommunications so as to address this manner. Kakabit din nito ang sabayan at agarang sunduan sa mga ahensya ng pamahalaan tulad ng NTC, DOST, 
at mga telecommunication companies para sa installation ng dagdag na cell sites para sa remote areas upang magkaroon ng maayos na signal re reception. Ito po ay usapin ng policy coherence upang tipunin ang lahat ng stakeholders at makapagbuo ng nararapat pro-people at mas epektibong mga solusyon. Kasama dito ay maaari ding maglunsad ng kampanya ang buong komunidad kasama ang iba pang pamantasan at paaralan upang ipanawagan sa Kongreso ang pagpapasa ng 50% discount allocation hanggang sa maging libre para sa mga guro at mag-aaral ang subscriptions gaya ng prepaid loads upang matulungan ng ating mga mag-aaral na may problemang pinansyal. On the economical approach, the material condition that the students are facing is a big factor and consideration with regards to the ensurement of quality service delivery. We have to understand na hindi ho pantay-pantay ang socioeconomic status ng mga estudyante at hindi natin pwedeng i-impose sa kanila ang mga inconsiderate policies. At the end of the day, when we implement a policy, we should ask ourselves, do we really achieve a fair equal and quality education for imposing such. Second, we can create policies that cuts across the student concerns and their family's welfare. Nararapat na ipanawagan ang tuition fee, freeze, at discount sa mga pribadong paaralan at tanggalin ang bayarin sa mga miscellaneous fees dahil limitado ang paggamit ng pasilidad at utilities tulad ng kuryente, tubig, internet, at iba pa at ito ay maaaring maresolba kung magkakaroon ng isang memorandum order mula sa CHED upang may sinusundan at legal na batayan at proteksyon ang mga estudyante at pamilyang Pilipino laban sa taunang banta ng pagtataas ng matrikula. Ang mga rekomendasyong ito ay nakaangkla sa pambansang pangangailangan natin para sa mga mag-aaral. Kaya nararapat lamang na tayo ay mag-invest sa edukasyon ng kabataan kung nais natin ng isang magandang kinabukasan para sa mga susunod na pag-asa at leader ng ating bansa. Dahil mahalaga po na mairehistro na yung mga magulang ng kalakhan ng mga estudyante ngayon ay walang pang-sustain sa pag-aaral dahil karamihan ay no work, no pay policy, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemya lalo na ang mga estudyante na sa geographically isolated and depressed areas. In fact, the dropout rate is still high in the tertiary education for the reasons that they cannot handle the everyday situation even before the time of pre-pandemic, which includes kung paano nila mapapakain yung pamilya nila sa araw-araw. Kaya paano pa sila bibili ng gadgets for adaptation ngayon? Third is the practical approach. When we talk about avoiding the brain drain, kaya kailangan natin ng continuous learning process, dapat ma-introduce yung coherent policy reforms, not only in education, but it has to be integrated in the strategic plan and Philippine development plan para may industry na mag-aabsorb sa kanila. One thing that this pandemic thought us and made us realize kung bakit may tinatayang lima hanggang pitong milyong Pilipino ang mawawalan ng trabaho ay dahil umaasa po tayo sa industriya ng ibang bansa na pinupuntahan ng OFWs o kaya naman sa mga private or foreign investors. Ito po ay isang pagtiyak ng job security para sa ating manggagawa at kasabay nito ay ang pagbibigay ng nakabubuhay na sahod para sa lahat ng magagawa at pag-abolish sa provincial rate upang hindi na kailangan lumuwas sa Maynila ang mga manggagawa sa probinsya na naghahabol ng mataas na sahod sa parehong trabaho. We should establish and boost our own economy by creating a strategic line industries and from there, aayusin ang curriculum ng edukasyon natin because at the end of the day, ang brain drain na tinatawag natin ay nagtatago lamang sa tunay na problema na dapat ay ayusin strategically sa curriculum. But again, it has to be integrated in the Philippine development. Last point, in the financial aspect and approach, there is an important role of education in the pandemic and any other crisis. That, that is why it is necessary to invest for it. It is necessary to have a concrete fiscal policies para hindi nahaharap sa anumang budget cuts ang mga SUCs. Ang 6% GNP is the national and global standard percentage that should be allocated for education. Because according to United Nations 
Delors benchmark. This is the ideal percentage from the national budget that we should utilize and maximize para ma-improve ang education quality, lalo na sa ating bansa. On the financial aspect, sa parte naman ng ating kaguruan, dapat tiyakin ng pamahalaan na walang guro o empleyado ang matatanggal o mababawasan ng benepisyo dahil sa pandemya. Bagkus, dapat ay tiyakin na walang maiwanan at malaglag pa sa laylayan ng lipunan. Kakayanin natin ito kung i channel ang pork barrel ng mga kongresista upang i-bail out o kargahin ang sahod at penepisyo ng mga guro mula sa pork barrel na pinagsisimulan lamang ng korupsyon. Maaari ding hilingin ang debt relief o hindi muna pagbabayad ng utang, lalo na sa mga utang na ilang tao lang ang nakinabang upang tulungan ang mga guro at lahat ng mga gagawang apektado at delikadong mawalan pa ng trabaho. Kailangan din na agarang ipasa ang mga batas na poprotekta sa mga guro at empleyado ng paaralan at ibasura ang mga dole advisories na nagiging palusot lamang ng mga may-ari ng pribadong paaralan upang tanggalin sa serbisyo ang mga nasa guro na naging pundasyon ng kita at pagyaman ng mga ito. Thus, we have to highlight that amidst the pandemic, Fund for research is vital. Kasama dito ang scientific method and approach sa ating educational system, lalo na sa mga curriculum na inihahapag sa atin ng mga mag-aaral para tiyakin ang kinabukasan ng ating bansa at ng buong mamamayan. Ngayon, there is an approximately 35% cut of free education budget or the UACTEA as stated by the DBM last April. At may bantang hindi pag-grant ng ilang scholarships mula sa CHED. Thus, we have to highlight that the matter in the budget, matter of priority, prioritization in the budget scheme of CHED should be rolled out dahil sakop na mga scholarship na binibigay ng CHED yung mga estudyanteng umaasa sa grants para makatulong sa pamilya. Kaya mahalaga po ang automatic appropriation ng budget sa education para maiwasan ang mga ganitong banta sa ating edukasyon. Ngayon, na mahigit kumulang 424 scholars ang nakabinbin na hindi mabigyan ng scholarship, nararapat na bigyan itong pansin ng mga institusyon. At isang hakbang para magkaroon ng dagdag budget para sa pagbubuo ng better normal academic condition ay ang pagkakaroon ng kansuduan ng CHED na ang budget sa SUCs for maintenance and other operating expenses o ang MOOE ay i-channel sa flexible mode at pagpamamahagi ng gadgets na walang, sa mga walang kapasidad de estudyante, lalo pat hindi magagamit ang mga pasilidad ng eskwelahan ngayon. Kasabay nito ang pagkakaroon ng sponsorships para sa mga cellphone at laptop companies na maaaring magbigay ng tulong pinansyal at gawing katuwang sa pag-upgrade ng system at transfer of technology na makakatulong sa curriculum at pagpapataas ng kaalaman ng mga mag-aaral. At sa bahagi po ng SUC, lalo na sa PU, we need to secure fiscal autonomy para malayang ma-rechannel ang mga budgets flexible to the material conditions of the students, especially sa PUP na may 70,000 population sapagkat kailangan po natin ng autonomous status dahil hanggang ngayon nakatali pa rin tayo sa burokrasya ng mga ilang institusyon na siya sanang sasagot sa added budget to cater new breeds of a scholar. At dahil dito, nalinimitahan ang pag-utilize ng budget dahil sa mahabang proseso na kinakaharap nito. In conclusion, with our call that there should be no students left behind amidst the challenging times, at the end of the very day, ito po ang pinakamahalagang rason na dapat nating isaalang-alang kung bakit kailangan ng malaking suporta para sa edukasyon. For it is the most crucial per perspective during the time of crisis. At hindi po ito maaaring ihiwalay sa government policies dahil lagi itong tatago sa strategic policies and programs on our education. Kaya hindi po katanggap-tanggap sa atin ang anumang budget cuts na banta ng DBM. For if that happens, it is clearly a state abandonment on education. At ngayon, bilang isang kabataan, nakikita ko ito bilang isang malaking hamon para sa ating lahat. Isang hamon na ayusin ang bukas sapagkat ang mga hinahaing na pulisiya na hindi tumutugma sa tunay na kondisyon, kondisyon ng mga estudyante, kaguruan at buong mamamayan ay sagka sa maayos na bukas na ating pinapangarap. 
isang hamon upang pagkaisahin ang kabataan. Kaya ako po, si El, ang rehente ng mag-aaral ng PUP ay nananawagan at tinatawagan ang lahat ng rehente ng mag-aaral, konseho at iba pang formasyon na tayo po ay magsama-sama na manguna at magkaroon ng inisyatiba for us to harmonize and concretize all the policies of all the universities as we do not fall for the better normal narrative of the national government as it does not depict the real condition of the people and it eliminates the citizens in the process of implementing the whole of nation plan and approach amidst the pandemic. Together, we are all in fight for the welfare of the students in establishing and creating a better normal for all of the university and for all of the sector. Kaya po natin magagawa natin at itatatag natin ng isang better normal lalo na sa sektor ng edukasyon. For the state more than ever must invest in the youth for a better future not only of the students but of the whole country as a whole. Pag hindi po natin ito ginawa ay parang wala na rin tayong natutunan sa pandemya. Para po sa isang kalidad, pantay at libreng edukasyon, maraming salamat po. All right, maraming salamat uh, Regent Eleanor Bartolome sa iyong mensahe. And uh, tal very hard to no? uh, it summarizes the, the issues being faced by the students today. No? So ngayon naman uh, to give the closing remarks for our webinar uh, this afternoon, I will call again uh, Mr. Junera Dacula, the president of the Central Nacolceno Mag-aaral for the call to action and the closing remarks. Mr. Janero. Hello, Aubrey. All right. Okay. So, um, nais ko lamang puntuhin na uh, or bigyang punto yung mga nabigyan natin na uh, iba't ibang mga polisiya at the same time yung mga concerns na ibinahagi natin bilang parte ng student sector at natin bilang mga kabataan. Ngayon, na, na, narito yung ilan sa mga representative ng, uh, ng CHED Unifas, tayo mula sa mga scholar ng bayan at mga student sector from private HEI. Sas nagtipon tayo ngayon dito upang sagawain natin. Sana, uh, fortunately, na ibahagi natin yung mga concerns natin as part of the student sector. But um, siguro may mga ilan din tayong mga um, katanungan na hindi rin nasagot. At the same time, may mga ibang katanungan din tayo na inaantay pang masagot. But at the end of the day, um, the end of the day, the, the unity of all the student sector is uh, a must and needed in this time of um, need and in this time of pandemic. That is why um, nais ko sanang um, hindi naman saraduhan eh, pu muli uh, buksan pa rin itong diskusyon ito sa lahat ng atin mga sudyante at the same time sa lahat na rin ng mga education advocates na ituloy pa rin natin yung mga gantong diskurso, yung mga gantong webinars kasi ito yung mga kailangan natin na um, it cuts across all the sectors na tinatawag natin. Ngayon, on, on, on the on the contrary of what we're trying to do, um, isa na rin sa gusto nating uh, mangyari dito ay uh, yung next na steps na gagawin natin. So anong mga policy recommendation yung kailanganin natin na i-interject at i-recommend uh, sa ating mga uh, governing bodies in such a way na ito na yung mga kakailanganin or konkretong plano, konkretong rekomendasyon ng lahat ng mga uh, kaguroan, studyante at manggagawa na apektadong apektado ng pandemyang ito. And um, siguro hindi ko na rin masyadong papahabain pa dahil masyado nang naging uh, mabigat sa atin yung ilan sa mga discourse at yung ilan sa mga uh, napag-usapan natin at Patuloy pa rin naman natin na pag-uusapan ito dahil hindi natatapos sa ating webinar ngayon. Yung ating call for a, a mass inclusive at the same time mass accessible na right to tertiary education, lalo-lalo pa na narito tayo at kinakaharap natin ang isang global crisis. At ngayon, uh, patuloy sana tayong um, hanggang hindi nakakamit natin ay yung better new normal condition na tinatawag na binanggit na rin ng ating student region from PUP. Isang isang ano yun eh, isang sampal yun sa mga scholar ng bayan sa mga sudyante na hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin natin na attain fully yung inclusive at the same time yung no student left behind na binabanggit natin at hindi rin yung nagmamanifest on the grounds at the same time hindi rin yung nakikita na 
ng ilan sa mga sudyante natin at the same time at the mercy pa rin ng mga student yung pag-aaral natin at the mercy pa rin ng lahat ng mga pamilya na idaos o igapang yung pag-aaral ng mga sudyante. So, um, to end na rin ito, <laughs> nais ko sanang i-invite din kayo sa mga susunod pa natin dahil hindi dito natatapos again. Ito ay simula pa lang para sa isang uh, makabuluhang diskusyon, makabuluhang uh, policy engagement at intervention na gagawin natin kami mula sa PUP at sa mga parte na rin ng iba't ibang mga state universities, local universities, at the same time private higher education institutions. Pagpatuloy pa natin na i-interject at the same time, i-recommend pa rin yung policy engagement natin. And pagpatuloy tayo uh, sa ating mga kanya-kanyang mga um, ginagawang surveys, kanya-kanyang mga ginagawang pagpapalalim sa ating mga kanya-kanyang konseho at universities. And yun lamang po and maraming salamat. Ayan. Maraming salamat, Mr. Junero Dacula, sa lahat po ng umaten at uh, nagpaunlak sa ating uh, webinar ngayong hapon. Maraming maraming salamat po. Gusto ko ngayon recognize muli lahat ng mga agencies and uh, schools na nakasama natin ngayon. Uh, the Commission on Higher Education, Office of uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, uh, INET, Philippines, and uh, the schools who are here to uh, here, in the, here in our webinar. Uh, the University of the East, Holy Angel University, University of Eastern Philippines, Philippine Normal University, and the PUP, Al PUP Alfonso and PUP Santo Tomas Batangas and uh, our, the, our co-organizers for this activity, the PUP Office of the Student Regent, PUP Central na Concion na Magaral, and the PUP for Equality and Advancement of Knowledge. So maraming maraming salamat po sa pag-tune in sa ating webinar and uh, makita-kita po tayo sa susunod na pag-uusap natin at sa ating susunod na matala kayan hinggil sa iba't ibang policy recommendations no? at uh, ilan sa mga sinusulat na pagbabago dito po sa education sector. So maraming salamat. Uh, po. Maraming salamat. Congratulations. Congratulations sa mga, kapat sa mga anak na namin. Congratulations, ha? Hi. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Floor. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh. Ayan na. Ayan. May evaluation form po na na ano na pinapasagot ng ating organizer. So uh, please access the link po dyan sa ating chat box. Sa so, so, meron tayong mga certificates dun sa mga naging speakers. Padala na lang natin. Thank you po. Thank you po. Narilig ko na yung ginawa kong host, ha? Out na muna ako. May, ano, may klase pa ako. Bye-bye. Salamat. <laughs>